Hello? Hello? Okay, I, I was not muted. I was not muted. It was somehow my settings. It was somehow my settings in OBS didn't have the right microphone. Okay, well. Uh, no, I was not muted this time. I, I swear, the microphone was on. I turned it on. I turned it on, but it, it somehow in OBS it had the wrong mic. Okay, here we are now. Uh, I was not saying anything important anyways. I just said hi. How are you guys? How was your weekend? <laughs> How are you on this fabulous tier is dead in the OCG day? Uh, we are going to react to the ban list. I saw that it came out yesterday, but I haven't actually seen... I have not actually seen what happened. I think we're going to have a good time today. There's a lot of things we have to talk about. I saw... I saw, of course, there was a remote dual YCS. There was a remote dual YCS. There was um, an OCG ban list. Then there was a, um, what's it called? The, the TCG uh, published reasoning for the ban list, apparently, which I haven't read yet, but I'm hyped for that. Uh, YGO Cody, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back to you. Thank you. Please, this is too funny. Yeah, I also saw this, which, I mean, look. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Hold on, I'll show you what I mean. I don't know why they had to do this. I don't understand exactly why they had to do this. Why they had to re-upload this duel from 2014. Uh, <laughs> yesterday. Why? That was not necessary. Also, what is wrong with this title, Launch of Dueling? Hello, what have I done to you? Why is it Joshua Schmidt demolished by Six Samurai player at YCS Milan? <laughs> They're not wrong. They are not wrong, to be fair. <laughs> You were mad? I don't remember. I might have been mad. But, like, the thing is... I mean... Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's alright. Why don't we get the warm-up stuff out of the way before we talk about that stuff, though? Let's guess that daily card. I This morning, honestly, I thought about not doing this anymore. The guess the card one. The, the daily one, because most of the time it's just cards I don't know anyway, so it ends up being like someone in chat having to look it up. <clears throat> but, you know. Blasphemy? But it's true though, right? That's what we do every time. Every time some card that I don't know, like most of the time. That link boxer? Okay, sure. What's fuzzy search? Okay, level 4... Fire monster with zero attack. Surely chat is not finding DB to find... That's the thing, right? That's what we do every time. Salamangrate? Is there a Salamangrate with zero attack? I can't think of any. Well, there's Mole, but that's not level 4. I don't think there is one level 4 with zero attack. Yeah. Um... Well, we'll definitely do the card guesser, but that because that one's like actually fun. This one isn't like I I don't know. Sometimes when you just don't know the card, it feels kind of pointless. Okay, zero attack, two thousand defense. See, I don't know what this is. I think I don't think I know this. And so now we sit here. Um, Spring Gans. See, how is this so perfect and still not it? That's insane. Is there another Spring Gans? No. Hello, Raw. I'm a dinosaur. Thank you for the six months. Welcome back. Appreciate that so much. Magma Worm. Magma Worm. There is no magma worm. The card you are talking about does not exist. Infernoble. 
Um, no Infernal with zero attack. Shiranui. They all have zero defense. They don't have 2,000 defense. Man. Uh, see, this is exactly what I thought about this morning. This is why I thought about not doing this one anymore. Instead, having more time for the card guesser. I did it today and I did not know the card. Okay. You know what? Tell me the card. Volcanic. Red Gartner. Yeah, see? There's no way. Like, th th there's no way I'm guessing that. There's no way I'm guessing that. They should make a... They should make one. They should make a version... If anyone knows the creator of this, they should make a version of... Only cards that were relevant. Like, remove the, the filler cards from the packs, right? Like, from the... Yeah, like, just get rid of those. So it's actually realistic to guess the card. I think that'd be more, way more fun. You know? That'd be way more fun. Because, like, you wouldn't... It's just every other day, it's just frustrating because you don't know the card. <laughs> Let's play the good game. Let's play the good game. Just guess better. See, that's the thing. You can't find a card you don't know. That's the problem. You cannot find the card you don't know because you, you there's no way to get closer to it like there is in Wordle, right? With the name of the actual card. If you don't know the card, you're you're cooked. Anyways, uh, surely we get four digits today. <laughs> Not with that attitude. True. Surely it's four digits today. Okay, this looks familiar. But there's no shot I'm naming this. I'm skipping it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, okay. Okay, I know what this is, but... Please. Yeah, oh, I guessed it on the first one. I, I, the thing is, all the valence look the same. I have no idea which one that was. Uh, this is Goblinburg, I believe. Yep. Oh god, old as vanilla that I can't no, no. It's an old as old as vanilla that we're skipping. Morinfen. Okay, that's impressive that you knew that. This looks No, it doesn't look familiar. One or eight. What is this? Oh, uh, shamanism? No? Wait, it's not Amazon as shamanism? I thought that was it. Oh, no. It, ah, damn. That hurt. That one hurt. Um, do we try and guess the rank up? Let's try and guess the rank up. I'm feeling lucky today. Someone in chat is saying Barry and Force. Barry and Force. You are lying to me. Quake Chaos. Nope. There's multiple Barry and ones? Limited Barry. Oh my god, no. We're giving up. Aww. Why they make so many rank up magics? No one asked for that. There's a lot of fire on this card, and I have seen it, but I don't know what it is. King Pyron. Uh, this I think is Dojo. Yeah. This is Gen X. Well, once again, there's too many Gen Xs to guess this. Yeah. Okay, I've never seen this. This is a horrible round. This is um uh not not conquistador, the bad one, Huakero. Like not the bad one, but the worst one. Sorry, Eldritch players. I take it back. Actually, you know what? I don't take it back. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we are not playing Flanderies Gui today. Just a demo. Thank you for the four months. Appreciate it so much. Uh, this might be Murmur of the Forest. Yes. Uh, this looks like a Megalith. Yeah, but like... Oh! Um... Oh god, that's not worth it. It's not worth it. We've already zoomed in too much. It leopard, I think. Yeah. Uh is this meteor rain? No. Hey, shower. No. Well, it is meteor rain, but weird. Okay. Jero, thank you for the three months. Appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the streams. Thank you. Uh this is Gragonith. Yes. Uh, this is, I think, a trap hole card, but a bad one in old. It might be DD trap hole. Yeah. I have seen this one. The thing is, I don't think I can name it. I don't think I can name it, but I, I've I've seen it a thousand percent. Wait, this is Chuchinoko? The OG? Which one is this? This one? Oh, okay. Some rose card. Oh wait, this is rose shoot, isn't it? Uh, actually, yeah, it's okay. That that the one the one basil rose card that I could have known. Um, I think this is Moja. Yes. Uh, this one I don't know. There's a Doctor D. <laughs> Why is he called Doctor D? Mm, Konami, why is he called Dr. D? What is he doing there? Mm -mm. Poison chain. Is this just Neos? Is this just Neos? Is this OG Neos? I think it's the OG Neos. Well, where is he? There, yeah. Uh, this, I think, isn't this the, what's it called? The ones that change their attributes in the graveyard. Um, yeah, the, ele isn't this element sabers? Oh no, it's Bujins, I think. Yeah, okay, Bujin intervention. No shot, I'm getting that. Wait, no, I have seen this. This is Synet Conflict, is it not? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, this is World Legacy. No, I have, well, same thing. This is some ritual. Is this pre prep or prep? Prep. Could have guessed that one on the first one. I think. Oh, wait, this is... Oh, God, this is Dogmatica. Maximus. Two points. Pathetic. Uh, I know this, I have seen this a thousand percent, it's very old, but... This, I don't think I have ever seen. Iron Dino Fusion? Is this Talent? Does Talent have a skull on it? I, I don't think it's talent. No, it's not talents. Oh, it's Jin. Uh, Jin. Demolisher. Yes.
Wait, I've seen this. I've seen this before. This is yeah, this is a kaiju, but okay. Um uh, the the star, yes. Mm hmm Yep, 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 yep. Uh this I have never seen before. Abyss script, that's why. Uh oh, Wernusilf. Okay, hmm. <laughs> There's two bears on Wernus of the Thawing Mountains is a bear, and I think Awakening Forest? Yeah. Uh, it's giving me Amazonas vibes. Wait, no. Oh! It's not Amazonas. Legendary Flame Lord. This, I think it's Kwakimeru something. Iron Core Specimen Lab. This is Girgia. Uh, Gear Gigant. Phantom Knight, Phantom Knight. Um uh, this is the rank two. This is the rank two. I played it, I've played it in Paleo before. I think it's it's this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh Dino Mist, I think. And this is what which one is this? Rush. Okay. Argue. Someone in chat knew that. I did not know that. Uh, I think this is Silver Gadget. Yes. Ancient Gear. <laughs> but we all knew that. I think. It's not Gear Town. It's Canon. I think that's what it's called. Ancient Gear Canon, yeah. Oh god, multi roll. Cyberdark. Cyberdark? <laughs> nope. Nope. Oh god, okay, we've skipped this one too many times. This is something earthbound. This, yes. Okay, now, okay. After failing this like three times, now I know the card. Pog you, we're learning. Uh, I think this is a Luna Light. Or Blackwing. Or Lurlusk. Something with birds. What I said. Um, This isn't... But okay, which the thing is, I don't know any of the witchcrafters. Yeah. This looks oddly familiar. This looks oddly familiar, but I can't name it. Void launch. Oh, it's a bad infernoid card. Well, if that isn't the weather painter, yeah. <laughs> of course it's a weather painter, but like... Oh, is this the big Super Quanto? Magnum. Magnus. Wait, no, it's not? Oh, God. Okay, when, if it's not that... It's a spell? Oh god, we always get baited by that, but that's Magnum on it, right? Vion. 
I hate when that happens. Those are the hardest ones. When you, when there's like a card on it, and you get you know the card, but you don't know the name of the spell. Wait, what? what, what uh, I okay. I know this card, but like, why is it so? Why is the artwork so weird? This is Maya Kashi? Hiranui or Maya Kashi? But the problem is... Yeah, okay. The Shiranui story. This one I have seen. But I cannot name it for the life of me. White Rose Cloister. Oh god, it's called Fighter. <laughs> but there's a bunch of those. It is Combo Fighter, you are right. Plunder! It's a ship! Liss. I did not know that, I looked that chat. I knew it was a plunder, but I didn't know it was Liss. Hexa Saucer. Mystic Piper, but we don't have enough time. Okay, well, not the best, not the worst. 640. We're not proud of that, but we're not mad about it. We're not proud of it, but we're not mad about it. You know what I mean? It's all right. It's all right. All right, let's get into the good stuff. Let's get the stream started. Now I can pay more attention to chat. Welcome, everybody. How are we guys doing? We are doing all kinds of good stuff today because there has been a lot of stuff happening over the weekend. Um, there was an OCG ban list that we're going to look at. OCG ban list that we're going to look at. There was a remote dual YCS that we're going to look at. I already saw Christian Urena winning the remote dual YCS. Very nice. Congratulations. We're going to look at the, the results. Um, and that's going to be cool. There was apparently, there was a, there was a, um, an explanation of the, the recent ban list by Konami. So we're going to check that out. We're going to see what that's about. Um, there was... What else was there? There's a, there's some new cards. There's some new cards, and and all all the good stuff. And um, I also have some. I guess right off the bat, let me let me get this out of the way. I have um, later. We're not gonna open it right now, but I also have. Uh, <laughs> I have this because. As you can see in the back, hold on. As you can see in the back, I have a a little something over here. Let me show you this. Oh god. Uh, look at this. We have this one. We're not gonna, we're not opening this one today because uh, the channel the channel has a new sponsor. The channel has a new sponsor. They're called Memory PC. And they do something very cool. They they let you they let you pick out all the pieces, all the all the parts of your PC, and then they build it for you. And they are now partner of the channel. So exclamation mark PC if you want to check out their website. Um, and they did the same thing for me. They configured a PC for me and they sent it to me. So we're gonna upgrade. The streaming setup even further we are getting more and more professional you know what i mean we're getting more and more professional as things progress and uh, i'm gonna set this bad boy up at some point um and they also for no real reason this was not something we talked about they sent me a little early christmas present because i'm a Yu-Gi-Oh streamer they thought it'd be cool to send me a box of burst of destiny so we're gonna open that up in a bit uh I didn't ask for this. They were just they were they were just being nice. So very cool. Thank you to Memory PC and welcome as a supporter of the of the channel. 
um, and we're gonna open that up later. So yeah, from now on, they're gonna be partner of the channel, and um, yeah, check out their 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 link and uh, all the good stuff. And I might also I might I'll talk to them if I if there's a possibility of getting like a a code for you guys as well, so there's something in it for you as well. But you know what? That's um still to be determined. You know. So the thing is, the cool thing about this is. The cool thing about this is that we cannot we cannot neg on this because I got it for free. So even if we pull like once again uh, only one secret and all that stuff, it still is uh, is it's still good. So literally insane. <laughs> Anyways, that is that announcement out of the way. Welcome as a supporter of the stream memory pc and let's get into the into the the others the good stuff i want to start with the t with the ocg ban list i want to start with the ocg ban list i'm gonna be honest with you guys because that's what i'm most interested about about most of these things and i have not seen this one at all well oh, i have seen the first two because it was impossible to miss um but I have not gone over all of this. I haven't thought about this. I wanted to make it my first reaction. You know, my, my first reaction as, um, as we go. I've heard a lot of... I've seen a lot of posts of like, oh, they, they murdered everything. Which, I'm gonna be honest with you, we'll see how bad it really is. But I'm not that mad about that. I'm not that mad about that. I think that's, uh, I think that's something that... Especially considering the situation of the... Considering the situation of the OCG right now, right? I mean, think about it that think about it that way. If some people in the TCG are getting tired of tier limits by now, imagine the people in the OCG because they've had it for like a lot more, a lot longer, like three or four months earlier than us, right? And the deck has been dominant ever since. So you know, they've played tier limit for a, a while now. They've had Power of the Elements uh, since April, according to chat, which is eight months now. Eight months of tier limits. And you can say whatever you want about tier limits. You can like tier limits. You can dislike tier limits. I personally think tier limits is healthy or like is a, is a cool deck. It's, not, the, it's not, not a bad format. The thing is, even formats that are good have to end at some point. At some point, they have to end. And they can only end in two ways. You either kill the deck with a ban list, or you power creep the shit out of the, out of the stuff. And honestly, I prefer that approach of, of murdering tier limits on a ban list, because I think power creeping tier limits is very, very hard. And would be potentially unhealthy. Of course, they, there will be power creep. There is always power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I feel like sometimes it feels really good to have those ban lists that just like reset. You know, just reset. Sometimes I like that. I, I Sometimes I'm a fan of that, even if I don't dislike the decks that they hit, some of them, right? But all that being said, that's just my intro because I haven't even looked at all the changes yet. But I mean, I'm seeing the first two changes. I'm seeing the first two changes already. And I'm going to be honest with you, both of those changes are excellent. Both of those changes are excellent. We have... By the way, I, this is the original Japanese announcement page. I just have it on Google Translate. So we'll see, you know, if, the, if some of the text is weird or whatever. But um, Kid Kalos and Barrier Statue banned. Honestly, they couldn't have picked better bands, I think. Hands down, they could not have picked better bands. If you had, if you had just two bands... If you had only two bands available to, to do anything about this format, I would ban exactly those two. Those are the first two that I would hit. Of course, there's other stuff like Instant Fusion should probably be banned at some point. Abyss Dweller should probably be banned. But if you say like, okay, you have two bands available, those are the two. A hundred percent, in my opinion. Kid Kalos is the most broken card in uh in tier limit by far and uh and barrier statue is just the one reason why flunder is even a problem to begin with i think without barrier statue hands down flunder could be okay of course the um the feather storm is a problem card uh and should also be on the ban list but you know what we'll take these two 
for the for the OCG. I am even I'm even interested in seeing what they did with the other tier limits because they have Pearl Rhino Limited, I think. Correct me if this is wrong. I think they have Pearl or Rhino Limited and I think they have Havness also limited or semi-limited. And I personally think, I personally even think that without Kid Kalos, they could probably even come back. They, I'm, I'm, I wonder if they did that because I think without Kid Kalos, those might be able to come back. Maybe. But they maybe, maybe they didn't want to risk it, but we'll see. Well, you know what? Let's see what they did. Ancient Fairy Dragon to one? Oh, okay. Ancient Fairy Dragon will have the following new text. Oh, the errata. Oh, no. I saw this this morning. Yeah, I saw this this morning that, they, that uh, Ancient Fairy got a new text. But I haven't read the text yet. So this is auto-translated, but let's see if it's understandable. Tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters. You can only use this card's names. One and two effects once per turn. Can be activated during your main phase. Special summon a level four or lower monster from your hand. You cannot conduct your battle phase to turn you activate this effect. That stayed the same. Can be activated during your main phase. Destroy all cards in the field zone and recover a thousand life points. After that, you can add one field spell card with a different card name from the destroyed card from your deck to your hand. Oh. Uh, so they added, hold on, they added hard once per turn. So you can only make one, which doesn't matter because it's at one, kind of. You could technically recycle it, but sure. And then the second part is the different name, right? 360 Smite, thank you for the seven months. I'm, I think, hold up. That's... That's a good change, though. I like this. I like this. First of all, I think I think cards from the extra deck, cards from the extra deck should be very, very. Most of the time, almost everything from the extra deck should be hard once per turn. Is my opinion because extra deck cards are by default accessible at any time, right? They are not limited. Yeah, you're not limited to how often you can summon them or whatever, right? Like that is um. Something that should be on almost every extra deck card, like a hard ones per turn, because those are just like, you know, in a way, you can see it as every extra deck monster is highly searchable, right? Um, so that's a good change. The question here that I'm also seeing here in chat a lot is, is this card still too powerful? Is this card still too powerful? And I'm going to be honest with you, it might be. It might be. Because it's still really, really strong. Of course, adding a different field spell is a, is a restriction. But I'm going to be honest with you, there's a lot of decks that can easily incorporate this still. Because, like, you can, yeah, you can pseudo space to copy a field spell. You can play decks with multiple field spells. If you have, like, I mean, the first thing I'm thinking about is, like, you can use this in, for example, Dragon Link, because Dragon Link can also easily summon it. And Dragon Link will have a free boot sector or ravine to pop. So you can basically search any field spell in the game in any normal Dragon Link combo, which is scary. Um, I think, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I think this overall. It's a, it's definitely a good errata. It's not like an errata like um like they did with Imperial Order, right? Where Imperial Order was changed but not really, like haha <laughs> jokes, it didn't change at all. It's still busted and stupid. This one changed, right? Hard ones per turn and searching a different name. That's a real change. It makes the card weaker. It makes the card weaker. The question is is that still too powerful? We'll see. But I, I still think it's a reasonable errata. And I personally, in some cases, I don't actually hate erratas. I think it's, it's cool sometimes to, to, give, to give playability to old cards. Although you could just make a new card that does something similar and that would probably be fine. But Well, yeah, we'll see what it is. Especially with the Strudo not being on the ban list anymore. For I mean, the OCG, I think, has three Strudos. We have... One? Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm interested to see what happens with this. 
But okay, interesting. Interesting to say the least. Uh next up. Who what? Okay, these are the limits. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go through it one by one, but I saw these down here. What the hell? Okay. Um so they limited Kashtira Unicorn and Kashtira Fenrir. Um and I'm gonna be honest with you, I hate this change. I hate the Fenrir change. I hate the Fenrir change. I hate it. I like the unicorn change. I do think Kashtira should have uh should have been hit. I the reason I hate Fenrir at one means that Fenrir cannot be splashed into decks anymore. That's what I really hate. I think Fenrir should be at two. It's like I think I think Fenrir is kind of um is kind of the one card next to like Destiny Hero Malicious that should be on the semi-limited list. Because I really I I really I was really happy when they announced Fenrir because it felt like this, you know, overall good card that you can play in every deck to answer certain floodgates and whatnot, like help break boards while being a good card going first. Right? It, we talked about this a lot back when we had these floodgate discussions, the generic out discussions. We needed main deckable outs for these cards, you know? I really liked the design on Fenrir. I think Fenrir outside of pure cash tira is a fine card. It's very strong. Don't get me wrong. It's very, very strong. I don't think that necessarily makes it bad. Uh, I really hope that the TCG doesn't follow suit on this one and instead semi-limits Fenrir. It's still splashable, just not an instant plus one. Yeah, but I think that's too weak, to be honest. I think that's a little too weak. I, I don't like one. I think two is fine for Fenrir. It's very, it's very, very strong. That's why I think it should go from three to two, just so you, you draw it a little less often. But in terms of what it does, I would keep it the same. Because, yeah, I, I think Fenrir should be able to search Fenrir. I mean, I mean, I think it's fine to disagree on this take, though. I think it's genuinely okay to disagree on the take. I think it's also fine to be like Fenrir should be at one because it shouldn't be able to search itself. I can understand that. Um, I personally am of a different opinion. I like when they make cards like this that are like splashable in a lot of decks and help you answer various situations. I liked Fenrir or I still like Fenrir and I hope we get to play with two Fenrirs at some point, like still for a while, at least for a while. Um... Because right now, the problem is, like, everyone is just playing Biss Steals instead in, in tier limit format. So Fenrir, outside of pure Kash Tira, does not really get... It doesn't really get its spotlight. It doesn't really get to shine as much as I would like it to, right? Because as long as we have tier limit meta, you're always going to play Biss Steals instead. That's what it is right now in the TCG. No one really main decks Fenrir. Very, very few. N not no one. But... I would like to have a format where we can main deck Fenrir at two, but okay. Unicorn at one, though, I can totally understand because pure Kashtira is very strong and it has a playstyle that I feel like a lot of people don't like. Willie Beamer 6, thank you for the two months. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Um, the one thing that I'm confused here by is the... This, the, the, the I mean, the, the tempo at which they did that, right? It's like... A little weird, because it took forever for them to really hit Tillemans. And now this came out, like, very recently in comparison to, to Tier, right? It's like, we got Darkwing Blast now, like, what, one and a half months ago? And they, so they got it, like, four months ago? Four and a half months? Five, maybe? July, so four and a half months, yeah. Uh, Ankh time, thank you for the prime. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Oh, the sub goal works again. That's so pog. Okay, nice. Um. Anyways, those are good hits. Those are good good hits. Um. <laughs> these two down here. I I can understand it. The Shaven and the Rhino Heart? I can understand it, but I'm gonna be honest, I think with the Tierlem and Kalos ban, they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that. Okay, I guess I shouldn't. Yeah, okay. I spoiled the next two already, my bad. They should not have they should they didn't have to do I mean they do they are sending a message. They are sending a message, 
And there's one more thing I want to say in a bit, yeah. I guess they just wanted to make sure this time, right? I guess they just wanted to make sure, sure. Because I feel like last banlist they tried. Last banlist they tried and didn't succeed. And this time they just wanted to make sure. Which, fair enough. And I will say, on top of that, Sharon, I've said this before, but Sharon is just a good card in general, right? Sharon is a good card even outside of, of, of tier limits. It just hasn't seen play yet, but I, I promise you, if there's ever another deck, if there's ever another deck that just really likes graveyard effects and level 4 extenders and has like monsters you want to discard from, which aren't really the biggest requirements, right? Like, a lot of decks like level 4 dark monsters. A lot of decks like milling cards. A lot of decks like sending cards from their hand to the graveyard. You can play Sharon in a lot of decks. It's not being played in other decks right now because everyone is playing tier limits. But at some point, that card could see play. That card could absolutely see play. So, I guess as a preemptive hit, I don't actually mind it. I don't actually, I don't actually mind it. Um, the Rhino Heart, honestly, not necessary, but you know what? Fair enough. I think the, I think this is just a message to the OCG players. They had to endure Kash Tira Tierlament as they're pretty much only two options for a long time now. And I, I can imagine some of them are just sick of it. So I think they're just making sure. I think they, I think they're just doubling down. Cause like, I mean, think of it that way. If the, if the Kid Kalos ban is enough to kill Tierlaments, then who cares if they have one Shaver and one Rhino Horde? If it's dead, it's dead. Right? If the Kid Kalos ban is enough, then who cares about these changes? You know, who cares? But if the Kid Kalos ban hypothetically wasn't enough, then better be safe than sorry and hit these. Right? So fair enough. Why kill it and not make it fair? I don't think there was a... Like, sometimes... I understand that sentiment, right? I understand that sentiment, but I don't think there's a realistic way to make tier limits fair in a way, which, I mean, in some ways, here was always fair, right? In, in some ways, but it was always too strong. The problem is tier limits, card, the design behind tier limits is a little bit wonky and it's very hard to balance. Um, you know, the only way to make tier limits a fair deck, quote unquote, was is to ban Kid Kalos and either just not give them a replacement or maybe give them a way weaker replacement. Maybe that. But like I sometimes sometimes you just gotta kill off some stuff. You know, sometimes you have to admit, okay, we designed this deck and I think it's a little bit too strong. Uh you know, I I'm I'm okay with the deck dying. It's kind of an admission that tier design is flawed, which is a good thing, though. It's a good thing for a company to be able to admit that type of stuff. Even though they were a little slow at doing it, like tier was very, very relevant for very long. Um, but it's a good thing for them to be like, okay, here, um, they are kind of, what we did here, kind of an oopsie. It turned out a little bit too strong. So let's just, um, let's just get rid of it. You know, that's, I think that's okay. I can live with that. All right, the next two. Oh, okay. I I don't want to spoil the other ones. Okay, so we have Ptolemaeus, which I'm going to be honest with you, this won't matter. Um, this will not matter in the TCG. Everyone who's been playing Ptolemaeus in the TCG is uh, out of their minds in most decks. Like, this card requires three extra deck slots for something that one Abyss Dweller does pretty much right now. Um, Ptolemaeus is, is, is Copium. Ptolemaeus is Copium, um, unless they release, like new broken i don't know rank fives that you can rank up into or whatever um as it currently stands three extra deck slots to fit a con to make a constellar diamond instead of dweller or baguska is just madness um it's just madness and then magnamut is the perfect limit honestly magnamut should be limited i believe after having played with this steals for a while now i believe that um this steals are very very strong and Magnemutes especially feels so powerful. I really like, I kind of like that they left it at one instead of banning it, even though I think the card is technically ban worthy. I kind of like leaving it at one because it means you can technically still play it in stuff like dragon decks 
where you can summon it off of Sphere to get follow-up. I think that's a cool thing. To me, that's a cool thing, right? The fact that you can like summon it off Sphere, um, get follow-up and stuff like that, that's fine. I think Magnemut should definitely be limited at max. You can also Lubellion for it in pure Bist deals, exactly. There's like ways, there's like very, very few decks that can search it, right? Some decks can search Magnemut, and I think those decks should be able to play the one. Um, I do think, and I mean, this could have happened. I haven't looked at the rest of the list. I do think that Druis Worm could also be made an argument for to be at one or two. Um, but we'll see if they actually did that. I doubt they did. I feel like Druis, Druis Worm feels a lot fairer, though. Also, there's another one. There's, there's a new Bistil coming that's also strong. So, I, yeah. All right, we have the next two. Okay, we have Steam the Cloak again, which I was... I was concerned about Steam the Cloak when we got it back. But after a while now, I gotta say, it feels fine. It doesn't really do much. You know, in the TCG so far, it doesn't really, it doesn't really do that much. We, they might regret it at some point. They might regret it at some point. But we'll see about that. Uh, Santiana, thank you for the Prime. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the support. Welcome to the stream. Change of Heart came back. To one. Uh, without a text change, thank God. The card is fine. We have it in the TCG at one. And honestly, in my recent ban list discussions, I even thought about maybe putting it higher than one. Um, the card is really strong. I feel like, but it doesn't even see that much play. But whenever it does, it doesn't feel that broken. However, I don't think I don't think I want to live in a world where we have three change of heart, three mind control. Maybe I do. Maybe that's fine. I think three change of heart, three mind control seems a little bit too much. That seems a little bit too much. Of course, yeah, mind control should be at three before change of heart goes to three. Of course, we don't have to talk about that. Um... Mind control is still limited for the TCG. I think that should come off the list. I, I, I can live with three mind control, one change of heart. I can, I can live with that as a compromise instead of giving us all six. But I think at one, the card is totally fine, I think now, which is a crazy thing to say considering how good the card is. But I think um, change of heart is fine. I like change of heart. I've played it in some decks uh, and it's been very fun to use. So I like that. Oh, this is a long ass list. They 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 really nuked it. Okay. Oh. Um this is the is this is the Kashtira field spell? Is it? Bro. I mean Oh god, they went hard on that stuff. They went hard on that stuff. That card also just came out. Is this a record? Like, when, when did Photon Hypernova release? Wasn't that a week ago? No, it's not a week ago. When did they... A month ago. Okay, okay. A month ago. Okay, I take... I, I thought it was more recently, but okay. But that's, that's very quick. That is very quick. Damn. Kashtira must be, like, hated in the, in the OCG. And I feel, I'm not hearing a lot of good things about Kashtira, to be honest. Like, Kashtira feels like something that not many people like to go up against. But then again, the same is true for Flunder, and for, like, Flunder, it took forever. But, um... I mean, okay, dude. If, I, I, I think the card in itself is definitely strong enough to be limited, so good on you. And the same goes for Branded Fusion. I mean, I am a... I'm a big fan of, of Despia. I love the Despia archetype. I still think they kind of missed the mark a little bit on Branded Fusion. They made that one card a little bit too strong. Um, one copy, I think, is fine because you can search it. You can set it back with Tragedy. You can recycle it once you have it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, honestly, Branded Fusion is a card that should be at one or banned. So I'm fine. I like, I like Branded. I like Despia. I really like Branded Despia, but like... That card, you gotta admit, like, even if you like an archetype, you gotta admit that that card, 
it's a custom card. Like, come on. It's a literal custom card. And I do, I do think there's a strong argument for custom cards to be on the ban list. So, like, I think that's fine. And then, new semi-restricted card. Uh, Galatea, was that limited? Or even banned? That's good. Then we have Swap Frog. Where was Swap Frog at? Where was my homie Swap Frog? Where was my homie Swap Frog? One? Why'd they put Swap to one? Isn't, uh, isn't Toad banned? Toad is banned and Swap Frog was limited? Why? What did he do to you, Konami? Free my boy! Do they have Ronin Toad in? They have Ronin Toad in. Okay. I mean, still, I think without Toad, I think without Toad, you know, free, free the Swap Frog. Thank you. Alright, next up, we got Kagari. Ooh, what do they have now? Two engaged, two, Gagar two Kagari? They have two, two engaged, two Kagari. Hmm. Interesting. What is the, what is the sentiment on Sky Striker right now in the community, by the way? Because I feel like without Mystic Mine, who can really still hate Sky Striker? I liked Sky Striker before Mystic Mine. I'm not asking if you think it's good or not, but like, I think Sky Striker is, is totally fine as long as it's not a Mystic Mine art deck. You know, so like, I and also at the same time, I don't even think it's that good. I don't even think Sky Striker is that strong in the TCG or TCG, uh, in the OCG or TCG. I don't think we're gonna see this deck do much with two Kagaris, but yeah, like it's like everyone is always like everyone is always like hating on these decks that do incredible first turn combos, incredible first turn boards that are like super fast to win the game. Like everyone always complains about that, but then when Sky Striker is seeing play which is like the complete opposite, right? Doesn't make a board, doesn't have any freaking heart negates, just tries to play the grind game. They hate that too. I honestly, sometimes I think people just hate to, just like to complain. They just like to complain. Because like this deck is, this deck in it, in the nutshell, in itself, is just the opposite of, um, of the, the combo pass that everyone is, is um, complaining about. But you know what? Uh, I, yeah. As long as my opponent doesn't top deck engage, I'm fine with Sky. Look, if anyone should be mad at Sky Striker, it should be me. And we will not talk about why. We will not bring it up. But if anyone should be mad at Sky Striker, that should be me. But even I, even I am not like against Sky Striker. I like Sky Striker. I like Sky Striker. Uh, Yadagarasu semi limit is irrelevant. That card will not see play. Right of Aramisir. Okay, now I need your help. What is the situation of um what's the situation of adventure right now overall? Griffin is banned. What else? Enchantress? Is everything else at three? Right was at one. Oh, there's more more to it? Okay. Then, then we'll come back to we'll come back to the right of Ramis here once we've seen the entire ban list. Uh, Infernity Launcher semi limited. I, I have mixed feelings about this. I have three feelings about this. I have three feelings about Infernity Launcher. My first, the my first feeling when I saw that was I was happy because I'm gonna be honest. I love Infernity. I love Infernity. I really, really like Infernity. Um, but then again, my, my, my next feeling is that Infernity in itself isn't really that healthy, right? It's not that healthy as a deck. I, I, I realize that. I'm aware that the Infernity design, the deck, is not the most balanced or fair concept, right? Because Infernity is just like an all-out 
combo deck that tries to do the craziest stuff and set up unbreakable boards, right? The, the card, the, the design of Infernity, I'm not that, I, you know, I still think it's incredibly cool because it makes me nostalgic about like 2011 Yu-Gi-Oh, 2012 Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day. I really like uh, Infernity. I still think from today's standard is probably not the most healthy archetype, so I don't want it to be relevant again. And then my final feeling on the card is that I, I don't think it's going to be relevant, to be honest. I don't think it's going to be relevant, so it's fine. Right? There's like, there's like better first turn combo decks that do, that do it better than Infernity. That the fact that Infernity has to keep, has to have no cards in hand means like you can't really play hand traps. So you'd have to play like a board breaker Infernity or, you know, you can play Imperm, but that's about it. So like, We'll see if it's relevant, but I doubt that it will be. So I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, they have more. Goods and Raigeki. And Light Stage. Hold on. What were these? <laughs> Okay, Stupid Burial and Thunderbolt. <laughs> Stupid Burial and Thunderbolt have been hit on the ban list. <laughs> God, okay. I don't understand both of these. I don't understand either of these. Look at Swap Frog's name, Demon Frog. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> What is a la Messia ceremony? Oh, right of Ramesir. Okay. Uh, Orion Ceremony. Orphegor Galatea. All right. Well, Stupid Burial is now semi-limited. I don't understand this. I mean, you can make an argument. You can make an argument for, for it because... The card is just generally good, right? It sees it sees play ev like over and over and over, like every once in a while. Like we played this card in 2017 when it came out. We played it in uh, in in Sky Striker. You could play it in whatever. Then you were able you you can send the Rainbow Bridge now. You can you you were able to. It's it sees play in so many different decks. Like it was good in Spiral. It was good in. Tier elements. It was good in everything with the Rainbow Bridge. It was good in Sky Strike. Like it's a, it's just a good card overall. So I guess there is an argument for it to be on the ban list. It's just a weird place for it to be, semi limited, right? Because if you would really think that it's that strong, then why not limit it just like Foolish Burial, right? Which there's even an argument for Foolish Burial to be banned because the generic access to the deck is just powerful. Even though I, I've kind of gotten used to playing with one foolish, and I think that's fine. I think they could do the same treatment for um, <laughs> the stupid burial, but okay. Raigeki, I don't really understand. Because we have three in the TCG right now, and honestly, no one bats an eye at three Raigeki. That card is just fine. No one cares. Uh, maybe it's very, maybe it was very strong in this format, in the in the OCG. I remember seeing it in a couple of decks. Um, but okay. Interesting. I'm I mean interesting. I'm I'm not opposed to it either. Like I, I'm not attached to Raigeki. Like I don't think Raigeki is super healthy or super unhealthy for the game. I'm kind of indifferent about Raigeki. I'm kind of indifferent about Raigeki. Um this yeah, it's 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 whatever. Like it's it's whatever. I kind of I kind of hate the idea. I kind of hate the idea that every single board you play has to have an omni negate. Right? You kind of want to promote decks that don't have omni negates. In that sense, Raigeki would be unhealthy, right? Because if Raigeki is is played in every deck, then you have to play decks that make omni negates or are indestructible or whatever. Um so if you want to help some decks that can't make omni negates, then I guess hitting Regeki is fine. But then once again, semi-limit just seems like a weird place for it to be. But okay. Then 
We have Light Stage, which honestly, I think is fine. Um, we've had we have gotten the third Light Stage in the TCG, and it didn't really make any any trouble. I kind I think Light Stage is is fine. It's like the it, it's just it's weird because Light Stage was so so strong for such a long time in the TCG for like a couple of years. It seemed very strong, and everyone was happy when it finally got limited, but. Now we've seen cars like Pearl or Rhino and such that like search on activation and do so much more than light stage that like light stage in comparison just feels like okay, right? Um, so that's all right. And then we have the cars that are unlimited. Okay, here we have the we have Dragon Buster, Double Iris, and Enchantress. Honestly, I think all of those are, are very fine. Oh, and okay, I don't like that one. Well, I mean, do I hate that one? I like the thing is about Eldritch, I don't think I don't think these cards are the problem. I don't think the Eldritch cards are the problem. So in a way, I think it's okay. Torn scale two. Oh, I guess there's an image missing. Phantom Knight Torn okay, there it is. Yeah, it says it here. Okay. Um Double Iris is fine. Buster Dragon is I don't know why this card is even on the ban list. ABC sucks. Has <laughs> always has. And then Enchantress. I honestly think they could even unlimit Rite of Ramus here. I think banning Griffin is the perfect solution. I think banning Griffin is the perfect solution to the to the adventure package. I think this is fine. Yeah, and for and when we talk about in El, talk about Eldritch, it's like the floodgates are the problem. The skill drain, the whatever they have is the problem, not this card. Like the Eldritch engine is good. But the floodgates are what makes it unfun to play against, or what makes it oppressive. But overall, overall, this is a this is a massive ban list. This is a massive ban list, and I'm gonna be honest. I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. Overall, um, like I said earlier, I think every once in a while, every once in a while, I think it is it is healthy for the game to have this kind of reset, right? Because let's be real, there's two options on how to give us new decks or like a refreshing format, right? Or like give, give us a little refresh. The number one way is um, power creep. The number two way is, is the ban list, killing off some of the stuff. And I'm going to be honest, Kashtira and Tillament, they seemed so strong that power creeping those decks is scary. Like, if they went for a power creep approach, that'd be, that'd be a little concerning. So I'm happy with, with the reset here. And I hope, I hope we get the same in the TCG. Honestly, if we get the exact same ban list, I wouldn't be mad about it. I would not be mad about it at all if we got the exact same right now. Uh, that I'd be fine with it, honestly. Um, we do have to hit Sprite too, because they already have the Sprite hits. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I don't mean the exact same ban list as the OCG. I mean like the, um, these changes, right? And I say that even though I don't hate tier limits. I don't hate tier limits. I actually think tier limit is kind of a healthy format, right? I think tier limit is fine. But even decks that I think are fine, at some point, I think they should move out of the meta to keep it fresh, to keep it interesting. Um, because, you know, at some everything gets boring at some point. Everything becomes boring after a while. Um, so I think, I think it was necessary. I think it was necessary. Yeah. I, I and then the the only thing there's two things there's two thing, things that I'm not sure I would have done the same way on this entire ban list. There's two things I don't necessarily agree with. Everything else is fine with me. The first thing is I'm I'm a little concerned about Ancient Fairy Dragon because I do think I do think this card getting an errata means that we will also get it in the TCG. And I'm not sure if this card is not still too powerful. It might be. Like this, this, this card might still be too strong, and I'm a little, uh, I'm a little concerned 
about that. I'm a little concerned about that, but it is, I guess it's okay. I guess it's okay to try it, but this card might end up having to be banned again. I, you know, it might. It might. The second thing I don't necessarily agree with is limiting Fenrir. I would have preferred seeing Fenrir semi-limited uh, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. I, I was kind of a fan of Fenrir in as a splashable card in most decks, and I think it loses that quality as a one-off. As a one-off, I think it loses that quality, and I would have liked it to keep that. Now, those are the two things that I don't necessarily agree with. Everything else... Everything else is pretty good. Yeah. They did a that, that's a pretty good ban list. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like that, uh, this is like a solid nine out of ten ban list, I think. Anyways, I'm doing a quick, very quick toilet break. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that. That is that. Impressive ban list. I can only hope that the TCG follows suit on this. I genuinely do hope that. I genuinely do hope that that they that we get something similar to this. In the TCG. Uh, I don't know if you agree. Let me know if you agree. I think, I think this'd be cool. Speaking of, speaking of the TCG ban list, what a segue, huh? Professional streamer man at, at work. The TCG, Konami TCG has published a explanation post for the ban list, I guess. Uh, whatever you want to call it, which is something that we haven't had in forever. I don't know how good of an explanation this is. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. I have not read it yet. I wanted to, you know, read it for the first time on stream, get my first impression in. Uh, I am happy... I before we read before we read it i'm hopeful that this is like a good a good insight whatever give us some explanation for this ban list um i'm hopeful 
let's say the least. But let's see what it is. Let's let's just hop right in. I don't want to, you know, I'm I'm just honestly, we've always been the 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 Yu-Gi-Oh community has been complaining about like a lack of communication. So I I think I think communication is a good thing, even if it is not like, even if it's not exactly what you expected. But we'll just see. Uh, the new Forbidden Unlimited list is in effect for YCS Remote Duel. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. A new Forbidden Unlimited list for the advanced format just took effect on December 1st, and it's currently in play for YCS Remote Duel. Check out the big changes that were made that will affect this weekend's competition. Newly Forbidden, Mystic Mine and Curious have joined the Forbidden list. Mystic Mine had recently become a key card in comp... Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Interesting choice of words. Well, we shall we shall accept it. We shall accept it. Has recently become a key card in competitive dueling, forcing many duelists to include cards in their deck that can get it off the field or risk losing once Mystic Mine is played. With Mystic Mine now forbidden, duelists no longer need to consider the possibility of this controversial field spell card stalling a duel for several consecutive turns. Curious the Light Sworn Dominion was a popular card, especially among Tierleman duelists, because it was adept at sending cards from the deck to the graveyard. Okay, yes, you, okay, I, I, I can read the card. Perhaps most importantly, it's able to send the card of your choosing to the graveyard if it's linked. Oh, okay, that noted. Okay, didn't know that. By sending highly impactful cards like Eradicator Epidemic Virus or Deck Devastation Virus to the graveyard, duelists were able to return those cards to the field with Nightmare Griffin and use them to annihilate an opponent's chances of winning. The addition of Curious Delights for Dominion to the Forbidden List prevents this from happening and deals a blowout to decks like Tierlemans that made the most effective use of Curious. But, like, that's just an... That's not... that You were just explaining how the cards work. Like, I can watch any deck profile from six months ago and they would tell me how curious works like i can watch a deck profile from euros and be like okay they use curious to send eradicator i knew that i guess it does explain it to it does explain it to the more casual audience which i guess makes sense but it doesn't really talk about the philosophy behind it but okay maybe it gets better newly limited the elements have been dominating the advanced format of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game ever since the release of Magnificent Mavens and the Fairy Type Ishizu cards. Not, not necessarily true, they've been dominant even before that. Those decks typically used three copies of Herald of the Orange Light because it could stop an opponent's monster effect whilst... Yeah, okay. The new limitation on Herald of the Orange Light weakens Tillament decks that incorporate the Fairy Type Ishizu monsters. Okay, well, technically you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but it doesn't explain why that, why that was deemed like enough, but okay. Newly semi-limited. Lyrilas Crescital Starling was previously limited and has now been bumped up to two copies per deck, effective December 1st. The Lyrilas strategy hasn't recently been popular in competitive dueling, so this change may give them a much-needed boost. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is a... On, this is the first explanation. This is the first thing that actually is an explanation of like, okay, Lyrilusk kind of sucked, so we thought we'd give them something back, right? That's a fine explanation. 
A whopping five cards were removed from the Forbidden Limit list entirely, effective December 1st. Two of those cards, Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos, were previously both limited to one. Both of these cards remain on the field after they activate it and will banish any key card that would be sent to a Tier Limit Duelist's graveyard. Generally, this will completely shut down the Tier Limit Duelist's place, since virtually all of the monsters in the Tier Limit deck need to be sent to the graveyard to use their most powerful effects. The removal of these two cards from the Forbidden Limited list gives other decks the power they need to defeat Tier Limit decks. Well, no! No, it does not! This what you're. This is not a good thing. This will completely shut down the Tillman Duelist. That's not a good thing. We don't want that. We want to play the game. Oh God! This is a cursed paragraph. This is a cursed paragraph. This literally says. This literally reads. We added those cards so that you can make. Like, you can make your opponent unable to play. We want... They say we want your opponent to be unable to play. They really just said that. Why would you say that? Oh, God. How about you just... Instead of giving us floodgates to stop the people from playing... Why, why don't you just take the unfair stuff away from us? So that it's okay if they play. If you acknowledge... That it's a problem when the tier limit dualist plays. Right? Because that's the problem we're solving, right? The problem here, they were like, okay, it's a problem when the tier limit dualist plays. That is a problem. And so they were like, okay, we can we can make it so that it's okay when they play, or we can just stop them from playing. And they were like, yeah, that that's the one. That's the one. Pog, you. We're going to stop you from playing. All right, cool. Noted. Uh, Telenite Ptolemaeus, which was just removed from the Forbidden list in the latest update, can serve a similar function to Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos because you can XYZ summon it and then go straight into Diamond by using it as an XYZ material, blah, blah, blah. Diamond sucks. Uh, sending cards from the deck to the graveyard is a core to the T element strategy. Allowing Telonite Diamond to put a complete stop to just about any tier limit. You don't, we don't want that. In addition, Diamond can give up an XYZ material to negate the activation of a dark. Okay. Metaverse and Tanky were removed from the Forbidden and Limited list. Metaverse was because of Mystic Mind. That's, that's, a, that's an actual good reasoning. Uh, Fire Formation Tanky was previously semi-limited and was removed from the Forbidden Limited list and entirely on December 1st. Tanky is a key card for improving the consistency of decks. That's also fine. Because they haven't recently been popular. Okay, so... <sighs> the latest Forbidden and Limited list update isn't the most drastic one we've seen, but it weakens the tier limits decks. No, it doesn't. It doesn't weaken them. It just gives other decks floodgates against them. That's not the same thing. The deck still does the same. Like, you have two less heralds. Who cares? This weekend's remote dual YCS is the first YCS adventure. The new Forbidden Limited list is in effect, so we'll soon see the full impact that it's having. Yeah, okay. I wonder what won that remote YCS. I wonder. The weekend is... I wonder if the weekend... Yeah, after... Okay, chat. What do you think won the remote YCS after they weakened the uh, tier limit deck? What won the YCS after they weakened the, um, the tier limit deck? Hmm? I couldn't guess. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know. Like, what, po what could possibly have won this YCS after they have weakened the tier limit deck so much? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, okay, I will say one thing. I will say one thing. I think any, I think any communication is, is, is good communication in this case because we haven't had something like this in forever. I'm not mad at this post some, like, because I don't even know what, is the, what, the, what the purpose of this is. I'm not sure. I, it doesn't look like it's supposed to explain the reasoning behind the choices really well. I don't think this is the purpose of this blog post the purpose here it's to me it seems 
that the purpose of this is just explaining these changes to like the more um the more casual fan base of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? I feel like it's just like okay, uh if someone has like no idea how Tailament works or is like not really familiar with the deck, they're like, okay, why was Curious banned now? And like what were people doing with Curious? If you're living outside of that bubble of like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, you might ask yourself, okay, why can I not play Curious in my Light Sworn deck anymore? Whatever, like that, you know? And I think getting an explanation like that can be helpful. Right? It, it can help. But like for the most part. This doesn't really explain much. It doesn't explain much in terms of the reasoning behind it. Because, like... And I don't even know. I don't know that if that was the purpose of this. I don't know if Michael Kohanim, who wrote this, is even part of the people that make the decisions in the ban list. I don't know that. Maybe he is. Maybe he's not. Maybe he is. Maybe he's not. So, like... Uh, it would be it would be very very cool to have a person that actually makes decisions being like okay i made this decision because x right because everyone knows why mystic mind was a problem everyone knows what curious was used for but like give me the explanation why you decided to ban curious now rather than like a few months ago or on the last ban list or whatever right like like give me that reasoning give me the reasoning why mystic mind was was banned was not banned for so long don't tell me it had recently become a key card but okay i mean yeah as it is right now this is kind of whatever right i mean this is literally we knew all of this already that's just, that's basically the one thing that's a little frustrating to me is not that i'm mad that this post exists it's just that it didn't tell me anything I didn't know, right? It didn't tell me anything I didn't know. It still is fine as, like, giving the explanation to, to uh, the people that aren't involved as much in, um, aren't involved as much in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, right? It is a good explanation for casuals. I do think it's a good explanation for casuals. I will give it that. And if, it, if that was its po purpose, if that's what the purpose of this post was, then it's fine, right? If that was your purpose, you know, then, then fine. Uh, as far as an explanation to the competitive viewer base, this doesn't really do much because this is like, what? Two weeks after... Everyone has seen the ban list. Everyone understands the ban list in the competitive scene. So, like, you know, whatever. Uh, okay. Um, not much to talk about, honestly. The only thing that is concerning is, like, the reasoning behind... I don't, I don't agree with the reasoning behind uh, Defissure, Macro, and Ptolemaeus. Like, literally unbanning cards saying, like, oh, this will help you stop the element from playing completely. I think is not, that's not what I want to hear. That's not what I want to hear. But okay. Uh, okay. Well, that's that. That is that. Um, what what is up next? We have, I guess, since this is somehow connected to the remote tool YCS, let's talk about the other big thing that happened this weekend. Let's see. You know what? It actually is fitting. It actually is fitting because it. Uh, we can now look at the impact that this ban list had. We can look at the impact that this ban list had. Let me quickly drop my own spreadsheet command to the chat. Boom. Bob. Dark Zeus, thank you for the 10 months. Appreciate that so much. Welcome back. Almost a, almost here since the very beginning. Thank you. The remote dual YCS had 526 players. That's not bad. Uh, I did not play since the time zone for me was hella bad. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the weekend version of Tournament had uh, only 56% in top cut. Only 56. Um, I will say one thing. The impact here, the impact here is not zero. It, it is not zero because th that was higher. Of course, this is only one tournament. So maybe the next tournament will have 80% tier again. Uh, it is still some impact, right? It's still some impact. But honestly, if anything, the impact isn't even that good. Because like, what, what takes the place of the, of the tournament players? Like, yeah, okay, Flunder, cool. Cool, Flunder, Hog. We have more Flunder now, exactly what we wanted. Nice. Um, at the end of the day, I'm still happy for Christian Urena winning. And we're going to look at what changed in his deck from before the ban list. Let me see. Let me see what won the first YCS after this new ban list. Yo, what's up, guys? So I'm here with uh, Christian Urena. You, you already know, AK Gunther G. Is this and, uh, loud enough for you? Multiple YCS. Let's go, Gunther. God, yeah. so I love seeing Pac so happy because I know they're really good friends. That's so wholesome. Hold on. Yeah. So, um, bro, uh, what what decks you play? I play Tiana. The only deck, baby. So uh, he's gonna show off his profile. But before we do, uh, Gunther, any, any shout outs? <clears throat> Uh, shout out to Store on Match Gaming. Shout out to Luxury. Shout out to Edgar. Edgar's right here with me, chilling. Hey, let's go. Uh, shout out to Tyler as well. Um, shout out to all the bozos that supported me the whole tournament. They're insane. Yep. Um, obviously, shout out to Pac. Pac, hey. Pac and Hani. I always do most of my testing with them. They always help me out. Let's go. Um, I can already yeah, see the one it. Herald. I'm Interesting. I'm and I see Agido. Multiple like, Agido. Oh, so. Okay. Right, yeah, sure. Sounds good. All right, let's get into the profile. <laughs> All right, cool. So with the tier elements, uh, two Rhino Heart. Yep. Three Merely, three Hadness, three Sharon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's pretty standard. I think everyone's playing pretty much these. Maybe yeah. a third Rhino Heart if you want, but don't want to break on them. So then for Shizus, I maxed out on them. Up three Gita, three Callback, three Mid. That is interesting. Because I haven't done that in any of my decks after the ban list. In any of my tier limit versions, I haven't felt the need to max out on Agito. Aura and Free Keldo. Um, these are the best cards in the game right now. Like, these are the reason why I want to play this deck. I always want to mill five. I always want to have these shufflers in my hand or like try to mill them off of the cards. Um, I think everyone should max out on these. These are just the best cards. Yeah, we saw Jesse did that last weekend as well at you know Costa Rica. So. And then the last two monsters, uh, one Herald of Orange Light. Um, it's limited. I'm going to play it. I don't think you should side up. I mean, if you play 12 Ishizus, you're definitely playing the Okay, it was yeah, so no good question. last format. Like, if I was playing it at three last format, I think you should still play the one copy. And one copy of Diviner. Um, it came up, like, twice. Uh, it's mainly there so you can make end on Baron against, like, rogue matchups. Like, it's really important, I feel like, to end on Baron so you don't get, like, Necrovalid or Defigured or whatever. So you have another form of negation. Um, also, having the Graveyard for Elf is just really good. Um, this is a good mill. It could be the third Rhino Heart if you wanted to play a third Rhino Heart too. But I like the Viner, it was pretty good for me. And then for the spells. Oh, if you see, uh, if you notice, I didn't play any Bestials. So no Bestials? Yeah, yeah, I was about to, well, I mean, we'll get into that as you show the rest of the, the, the non-edge oh, stuff you play. Oh, okay. Maybe you explain your theory on why no Bestials too, because I know, I, I entered with Bestials and a lot of people did as well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, zero bestials. I want to hear the reasoning on that before I say because at first glance I don't agree. I I think at the minimum you should be playing the three magnum the one druid swarm or something like that. Like min okay, minimizing the bestials I can, but zero. All right, show me what like. I think okay. you're the only person in top cut that actually played no bestials in their tier deck. So, for spells, uh, three field spells, fourth field spell. Oh, this is the best card too. You always want to open up this. Um and then um, two scream. Uh, this is mm -hmm. insane going first. Like opening up this card or just being able to mill it, it's really good. So always we get to search like a free solid like, or crime. Uh, instant fusion. Ban worthy the card is insane. If you open it up, you probably win. <laughs> so lucky. And then uh for my non-engine I play three super poly, three colors. Ah. 
Ooh. Um, these are like, like the like the best ones like going first. That were, like it wasn't bad going first if you do these. Like town is insane going first. You open up this mm -hmm. card going first, and you open up like any way to play. Like and I. So I guess. But that, okay, that has to be the reasoning. Has to be that we respect Sprite and Flunder more than just the mirror match, right? It's like the the prediction. I guess has to be. The, the prediction had to be that more people are going to play Sprite and Flunder now rather than just mirror matches, which I wonder if they talk about his like rounds in Swiss, how many mirrors, how many whatnot, if there's because like in the mirror match, I don't think Super Poly is better than this. Always mill five. So if I mill any effect and they mill anything, they're going to trigger it and then I get to shuffle it back. Is Super Poly I back? I don't want Super Poly to be back. No, nah, I hate Super Poly. Hands. Or you can draw two cards if your hand's really bad, but I almost always look at my opponent's hand and then like I don't uh, want to play around Super Poly. What their hand was. Uh, Super Poly was really good for me all weekend. Uh, people kept playing on Dweller Rukalos so or like Rukala, like one guy ended on like Rukalos Rano Heart or something. And I, like if you go like Super Poly, pitch like one of the shufflers. Um, you can like take the Dweller Rukalos and you chain the shuffler, shuffle them back so he doesn't get the Rukalos either. And if he has any shufflers, you get to shuffle those back too. So this card like could single handedly like win you the game. If they end on that board, which a lot of the time I don't use hit, like I don't use pieces or anything. Everyone's mainly can talents too, so I kind of like the like the board breaker approach because I don't get talents. Like it happened a couple of times where my opponents just have dead talents in hand because I didn't trigger any effects. And a lot of times my opponents are playing around bestials too, and I don't mm -hmm. even know. Ah, uh, so okay, okay, turning off talents without playing bestials if you don't have Havnus or or Kelbeck is like fine. The thing is though. Even if they have talents, a decent amount of the time you will have Elbeck or Havnus and use it, uh, which is a little awkward. And then also, you know, I don't know. It it depends a lot. Like it, it basically, if if you don't hand trap the opponent at all, and they make Dweller, you really have to hope that they end on Ruled Kalos and not Barone. Because if they have Barone plus Dweller, you lose, right? my deck so that also like was a little bit like bonus they have to like one guy went like rhino scream mill two name like milled one name something another name triggered both because you would lose to be steel and then their end boards are like way weaker and sometimes they have to make like if they end on dweller again like they end on dweller which is pretty common board you get to just like super poly them um and another, another time like there was a time i went like summon rhino sent a name it got uh banished i went sharon so the name it got banished then i'm like super poly take both my guys Make it get effect, and then I get the fusion summon again. So it's like a, almost the fourth way to fusion summon. That's not just like instant fusion or mm -hmm. like a brand in high spirits kind of. So it's like a lot of utility in this card. I think it's pretty good. I, I liked it. Uh, Shu Ping actually told me to play this, or he was playing his deck, and I took that from his deck. And I think he was instead of the talents, he was playing a uh, droplet. So and I I really like talents because going first. I would still under, feel I would still feel inclined to play like three man you know, one one or first. something like that, even if you want to so, minimize base deals. Um, but that's good. And then the last two cards are just two traps, one select, one crime. Uh, I play forty. I wanted to play the second select, but I really couldn't find space. Uh, it, like the only thing maybe you can cut this diviner, but I really wanted access to bear. So. But, I mean, it's cr you can cr cut crime. That's the only thing I think. Easy. Oh, sorry. Three forty. It's about yeah. this one. This, so, yeah. so you didn't use it in like bestials because like you think that because people are main decking more talents. I saw Jesse main deck talents this remote invitation as well, or, or YCS, and so like I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, you just don't like bestials, or what, what's your overall thoughts? I mean, you just think they're breaks or what? Uh, I'm not a big fan of them. I think they're like they, every time I play with them, I usually break on them, or if, I, if like they're really good in the mirror match. But against Sprite and Fonderies and all these other decks you're gonna play against, like they're really good bad. against Sprite, like, especially Magnemood. Magnemood's pretty good against Sprite. You only have like two to three cards to play against a deck. Yeah, and yeah. you're not you're not super like in a mirror match if you don't draw one. Like I'd, I'd beat a lot of mirror matches without drawing any. Like you watch any. They also matches, one thing. Like, I just beat them one thing that's split. like important about Bestials that isn't even it's it's just some it's somewhat hidden is that they really help you make Mud Dragon. Like I wonder if he even plays Mud Dragon in this deck because the only way to make Mud Dragon here is with Garuda. Garura later on. Like, you can't even... In the main deck, with the main deck monsters, I don't think this deck can even make Mud Dragon unless I, unless I missed something, yeah. Like, you, you definitely still play Mud Dragon because of Super Poly. You have to. So, like, but still, you can't really make it yourself. I just yeah, was yeah, on, like, yeah. a Havnus, and I have to smell, like, two names, and, like, that 
bat beat him or like my happen to smell like one shuffler but the thing is you you want to make like it very often dweller, you want like to make uh mud drag that, so like, but this deck can't I, really and then, or without like, super, I do super poly. poly and i get the super poly the two cards so like i don't think you need them mm -hmm. for the mirror match yep i've seen i've seen a lot of ocg lists didn't play them either so they kind of gave me the enough like to play without them as well and like I've been liking it. Like the last one I just talked about it also. I mean we had Mystic Mind. Can't make but... Beatrice set. Yeah, but that's okay. I think <laughs> you can like live without card, Beatrice. That's a nice That's all right. Like, we played like talents and super poly, which are like pretty good team. And these are also good versus like pretty much all the river decks also like spray and like other decks like that. So my talents are just insane. So Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh the extra deck. Baron, like I said earlier. Oh, played it this way. Other way. Yeah. This way. Yep. Yep, so Baron, um, gotta play this. Gotta you can make build. Beatrice with the with the Vinery on. Yeah. Made it like three times. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, Rakalos, Kaleida, Kit, Drake, Sapalia, Garuda, Mud Dragon. I think you just need to play all these. Yep. Makes sense. The six standard fusions. Sapelia's insane, right? Like, it came up for you to make Baron with as well. Yep. Yeah. Came up for Baron. Came up in the finals against Flunder. Uh, summon a defense so you don't get like lightning or anything and then you get a card so it's pretty good nice. play against flunder in the finals how is there how is there in in so many recent ycs's like literally the purpose of flunder is just be there in the finals for some good player to get a free win like like what the hell is the purpose of flunder like that's all it does that's all it does. It just always gets swept in the finals, like by by a good player. Like, what, what, why, why are you even entering with Flunder? Like, God damn, stop. And for links, one Sprint, one Elf, one Dark. Um, yeah, these are just pretty generic. I think everyone plays these. Oh, uh, one question I wanted to ask was: Did you, did you consider playing one Jewish Worm? I know you played Dark Charmer, but like, what if the, was there ever a situation where like you took your opponent's Magnemute and you oh, yeah. had an extra Bissil in your deck? You know, like in the mirror match, especially. Oh yeah, I, that that I think that is straight up a mistake. Even if you think biz steals are bad, if you well, like bad, but like even if you don't want to play biz steals yourself, this is a very good point. I think the one Druid Worm has to be in the deck. I think that has to be in the deck. I think that straight up is uh, flawed deck building if you cannot capitalize on your opponent's Magnemute in the graveyard. I think that's a mistake. Uh, it happened once. I've been once where that should be so I could have maybe but I still won the match I still won the match anyway. But like, that doesn't it doesn't matter. Even if even if it happened only once, even if it like even if it never happened, that is something that it, it should be in your deck. Like that the one the one Druid Worm should be in your deck. It came up once where I took his Magnum and like I kinda just used it for like damage. Mm -hmm. And he had he was top of the cards anyway and I had a solid. So it's like I think it was fine either way, but I guess the extra beast there would have definitely helped. But yeah. yeah. Most of the time in the mirror match too, like the, if I like, uh, if I like target their shuffler, my shuffler or something, they'll just shuffle back their magma anyway. A lot of the time, so you actually, well, a lot like, of the time, most players yeah, just always. never have a chance to actually activate dark to target the magma because mm -hmm. they'll just keep shuffling it back. Yep. Or even if you go if you go dark target the magma, they'll just like shuffle it back, or they'll just use their beast shield to banish it so you don't search. But they don't, I, they don't know I don't play beast shield, so that's like a, I guess a, another bonus of not playing them. I guess they just yep. like play around, play around for no reason. And then for XYZ's, pretty generic. Uh, Best Dweller, Refuska. This card is insane. I made it so many times. Uh, Redoer, uh, Zeus, Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice, I made like twice. It only comes up in games where you have to dark a beast shield and then uh, make Garuda. Um, you definitely or have to play her. I guess she does come up a decent amount of time. But the Viner, you'd yeah, would almost always again. rather make Baron. Um, yeah. I didn't miss any other extra deck card. I think it was pretty good. I yeah. made everything at least once. Yep. Did Wall ever come up? I know that's like the 15th next to next slot. The flex. Oh, uh, nah. Not, Wall didn't come up. Beatrice okay. is pretty good for me, actually. Beatrice is better than Wall, period. Like, overall. Oh, now the side deck spice. We're about to see the goo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my side deck was basically like nine cards. Like I didn't use like six of them, but... Yep. Uh, yeah, so uh, three zombie world. Mm-hmm. Uh, two Necro Banshee. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it to go with the Necro Banshee. It's mm -hmm. also a starter. You can just mill five randomly. Uh, you can take out like, some deck cards versus some other matchups. Uh, I really like this foolish. Like it was, I drew it like twice. It was insane. Like milled five. Or I got to like my opponent on like a Kaleida Heart and like two Shufflers in the grave and like a Solic. 
I got to like foolish or shuffle or shuffle. Foolish shuffle, is a nice idea. I like that. Empty, together with the banshee. And that, was, that was really good. You can make an argument that the foolish should be uh, main deck. against Wondery, Sprite, uh, one against Sprite, matchup in top four, I believe. And against Wondery, I always put it in. You can put it, put it in going first or second, it's really good. The, um, the cards I pretty much didn't even play with, but they're here. Three matches, these fiends. Explain the logic. Uh, basically, the logic was if you get to use any, like, like Keldo or Medora or Sharon or Field Spell. I guess you have a couple other cards. I guess Pulse ID also have Foolish Burial. So you, and you have Instant Fusion. And I think that's about it. Or a few more cards, I guess, and trigger like a Gito. Basically, if you, you have any of these cards with Majesty's Fiend, you just like go like Keldo, Medora, search your card, should be someone from Majesty's Fiend. And then there, there's only two, there's two outs in your opponent's deck. It's it's Scream plus Field Spell, which most people side out Scream going second because Scream is really bad in the main match going second. It's not. So that card shouldn't be in their deck. And then another out is uh, Instant Fusion for a level 4 monster to make like a rank 4 or like, I think it's a link monster big enough, but not really. And the only like, the only rank 4 is uh, Redoer, which they have to crash anyway. So they have to use their Instant Fusion and the 4 to crash it. And then the other out is Solic, which they have to set it and wait a whole other turn and almost summon a monster. So like, yeah, but all of those three are like probably, realistic um, things. I put this in last minute. I thought it was good. Like, a theory was good. All of those things are like more. totally fine. Like, first of all, Scream is not bad in the mirror going second. Scream is absolutely fine. Don't, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by this uh, blasphemy. Scream is insane. Uh, so Scream Pearl or Rhino is something that should absolutely be in your deck going second. Uh, so that's an out. Um, Instant Fusion is always in the deck. So that's an out. And uh, Saliak, like the thing is, set Saliak, what, what, that's, such a, that's such a strong play for your opponent. Like if you go normal summon Majesty's Fiend pass and your opponent has a Saliak, I think you lose that game because you can't play yourself. You just literally have attack next turn. That's your play. And then you pass and you just get obliterated by normal summon Saliak. Right? You get obliterated. I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. I'm I'm not a big fan of the Majesty Fiend. I mean, I never drew it, so I can't. I don't know if it is good or not. So, but I did mill it a bunch of times. So, I don't think it's very good. <laughs> all right. I don't think this yeah, is a good idea. That, if you think, like... yeah. No, I, I think we talked about it. Like we we were also thinking about like where. If you have to play in a way where um, you don't get bestialed, because if you do, um, then your opponent has a 2,500 body that can beat over the Magister's Fiend. So, like, you have to play very specific where you set up a way to special a monster without committing the normal, um, and then, like, tribute over Magister's Fiend without ever playing into a bestial, right? And it's it's got... It also would be a card that we thought would get a lot worse in Top Cut, because if people know you're on this, they might bestial you early on random cards, which actually might help you out. Um, randomly enough mm -hmm. so like it, it wasn't like yeah it's just like okay. it seems like it was a cute thing to try you know i don't think it it's good her. at all yeah if i if i had sharon i mean just you know to go like sharon she'd be 15 if i had it, it would yeah i think that's not a good opening I, I straight up that's just not a good opening like because you need like you need so you need like three turns to win after that i guess if you have another normal summon you need two turns but they can set monsters and then you need like multiple Nah, nah, this is just not good. They, what, they set Saliak and you lose the game. They set Saliak and you lose the game because you can't play under your own Majesty's Fiend. So you just attack and then, they, then it's their turn and they just Saliak you into Oblivion. Nah. So like, you have to draw like, literally scream that shouldn't be in your deck and a field spell that. Like, yeah, it's really hard really out. Hard. Really Even hard if you draw out. the scream, like, you still need the field spells. And then, and then the last, the last card, <laughs> three uh, spooky dogwoods. <laughs> yeah, yo, the goo. <laughs> this actually won me one match, and it was it wasn't even it, we had like t we had like twenty five minutes left, and I like spooky dogwood him, and he just started like scrambling and he just didn't know what to do, and then he ended uh, he was playing like uh, adding Nister, 
And yeah. if he ended on the towers, I would have lost. But instead, he went like uh, used four level force to make uh, math mech to search like a robbery. Mm -hmm. Um, he only gave me like three or four thousand life points, but I was definitely happier to play against the robbery than and adding Nestor with like five thousand attack. Because I don't think I, I don't think I would have an out to that. So yeah also i think you were telling me about this match i think he also talents looked at your hand like like you you, you got talents and you hand them a little bit and then that spooky dog would stop him from making an arrival you were saying right and then that like that won you the game but if the guy just like committed yeah. full send into and gave you all the i think this card is like uh, it's like if you're scared then you 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 can devote three side deck slots to it but like i don't think it's necessary but like you i i don't th i don't think it's like you would have won you know which yeah, is crazy we, we had plenty of time for him to just like plenty kind of, of play yeah. out and, yep. and stuff so so but yeah right. that's the deck that's the deck well dude congratulations two-time ycs champion now um that's i mean bro cool. more, more to come you know what i'm saying this is the start but uh yeah dude interesting um very interesting no big deals is interesting. I don't necessarily agree with some of these. Like, I mean, okay, there's two things I don't agree with. I don't agree with no Druid's Worm. I do not agree with no Druid's Worm. I think that's incorrect. You should have at least one uh, for when you dark your opponent's Magnemute, because that happens. They try to prevent it, of course. They try to prevent it, but, like, it, it happens. And then, um, I don't agree with the Majesty's Fiend at all. I don't agree with the Majesty's Fiend at all, but um, yeah, I mean, regardless, uh, over other than that, pretty solid, and uh, congratulations to to Gunther. Well done. All right. Um, is there anything else that's interesting here? <laughs> Blunder. Okay, we had top four was two tournaments and two buys. Okay, uh, and then what else do we have? Tournament Bestial, Naturia Runic. All right. Naturia Runic, top 16. I'm down. Can we have this file? Exclamation mark spreadsheet. Hey guys, Jared here. Uh, today I just got top 16 at the Remote Dual YCS in December 2022. Um, I unfortunately lost in top 16 to Flu. There's, I have a lot of feature matches, so feel free to read any of them from this event. Um, but real quick, um, I'm going to be going through this engine, not by like Spell Trap Monster. I just feel like it's easier to explain it that way. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is 42 cards. This is Naturia Runic. Um, but there's like a little, a couple of Shizu cards for what it's worth, but it's mostly Naturia Runic. Um, so for the Naturia engine, it was three Mole Cricket. Three Camilla and one Sunflower, two Blessing, and three Sacred Tree. Okay. Um, so before I like actually do any explanations, I wanted to say the reason I played this deck was I did not like tier. It felt very sacky in the mirror of like, oh, you milled this, he milled that, you know, yada yada. Um, this deck felt more consistent in beating tier and had a good matchup into it. And it also works better into other rogue matchups sure if it has um, that good of overall match, and doesn't lose to like the hard counters. Also, in this deck punishes people who are main decking Bistials very hard. It just gives them that is a good in their hand that don't really do anything. So, um, yeah, that's the reason I played this deck, first of all. I don't understand um, 2 Blessing. Uh, uh, I think the reason for 2 Blessing... Well, I'm assuming this has the Mudora and Keldo. If you have Mudora and Keldo in this deck, you can recycle your Blessings. And the card is technically not a starter. So that's I think that's why. So for the actual Naturia cards, Mole Cricket is like all these cards are just like really insane if I'm being honest. Like Mole Cricket is a quick effect won't fire blossom, uh special in Naturia from the deck. And then if your opponent has the highest attack, uh you can special summon two Naturia from your deck unrestricted. So you can summon another Mole Cricket, um two Mole Crickets, two Camellias, doesn't matter, you can summon uh whatever you want. And then in the graveyard, if you special summon a Naturia from the extra deck, um, and, or if your opponent special summons anything from the extra deck, you can activate this to bring itself back. Um, again, very good. Um, this card plays actually very well into Mole something Cricket like a cost um, It does come up, so it just, again, this is something that's very relevant. Once again, Mole Cricket um, is a custom card. And then we have card. three Camellia. Um, Camellia is, when it's summoned in any way, uh, you send a Naturia from deck to graveyard. When you attribute a Naturia to activate effect, such as the Mole Cricket, as I said before, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard instead. Okay, well, we know um, what they do very relevant so you can do some wonky things with chain links that's another reason why this deck is so well in the tier because you can chain onto their fusions and then you know they're going to summon something um next up is naturia blessing is to special summon into a naturia it just goes copy of something 
itself and in its area, essentially. And lastly, we have three copies of Sacred Tree. Just like there's some some scenarios where you'll have a board, your opponent will milk, uh, activate something like, we'll say, Keldo, um, or uh, one of the mill five. The cards are not or, out uh, yet in Master Duel, I don't think. Uh, yeah, no. Keldo or Keldo, one mills five for both players. Well, um, like some of them are, but you, I think uh, Blessing, and Camellia, and, and Cricket. Um, the tree, no matter what, yet. will go first, no matter who turn player is, because it's a mandatory effect. So if I have something like Baron on the field, this is such a cursed question. Have you seen Vlad's Virtual World of Tielemans deck profile? I have not seen that. <laughs> but we can and look at it. They mill a tree and they mill a tier name. Um, my tree will be chain link one, and the tier will be chain link two no matter whose turn it is, so my Baron can <laughs> no, what the, the hell? Baron's just an example. It could also be like Sunflower or anything like that, but yeah. And then while it's on the field, you can pretty much switch by tributing an Earth plant or Earth insect to special and the opposite from the deck. So you can tribute summon a plant to summon an insect, like the Mole Cricket, or the Mole Cricket to summon something like Sunflower in the Camellia. So that's it for the Materia cards. Um, these cards grind very well and they give you access to very powerful cards and synchros just for playing them. And um, yeah, Camellia is the tuner. It's very important also. Um, yeah, then we'll quickly having the recursion is very, very good. So yeah, that's it for the Materia package. Um, moving on after that, uh, with the like hand traps that I pretty much played was the Bistial package. Again, this is a, f a format of you know tier elements. So, you know, obviously we have to play four tiers still. Um, but these cards are like just generically very good also. I know this deck like punishes Bistials, but like I can still play them. And them being level six is also very good because Camellia is level four. So it gives you very well access into Baron or the Sword Soul uh, Synchro 10. Um, Drew's form being able to send like amazing. Like, the one issue with bestials in um you know like there's some decks it's just something to be aware of there are some decks like this deck for example it tries to make your opponent's bestials dead by not playing any dark monsters in its main engine right and that means two things if you add bestials to your deck you suddenly you can you can end up turning on your opponent's bestials right they can now use them on your stuff once it hits the graveyard um, which isn't the biggest downside because they can hypothetically also just use them on their own stuff, right? The bestials are never going to be completely dead against the uh, in the other decks. In this deck, though, if you are playing no dark monsters besides bestials on purpose, right, to make your opponent's bestials dead, what happens is if you play against Flunder or you play against like other Naturias, the bestials are completely dead because you don't play any uh, non earths or you you don't play any dark or light and your opponent doesn't so they are completely dead right in in those matchups unless you get like other like unless you get more of your best deals into the graveyard somehow the fact that you can just synchro this away into like a very powerful card um the synergy that these have with the sword soul level oh 10. you hugan you have hugan okay that's right okay that does okay take i take that one back then to non-targeting banish their cards on the field is also very good um yeah then obviously just like yeah, a yeah, yeah okay with you against flunder um, that's it i haven't thought my, about uh, the because this is anyway really uh if you get dimensional shifter you can still uh like use one of these on the shifter to summon a body and then like you can enter battle phase immediately and threaten the uh, barrier statue just something that comes up but um yeah it's just something to keep in mind so that's and uh i, I do play sorry just in the side deck so and uh, the last lead for the monsters, these are the only Ishizu cards I play, is two Keldo and two Medora. Mm -hmm. So these are like, this is so funny, these are like the worst cards in the deck in my opinion. They really have no synergy with the deck itself. You really just need the graveyard shuffle effect to like keep your Nateria engine going because you go through it so fast. When these cards come up, they're absolutely clutch, but when they're awful, they are like god awful. But it is always like, obviously it's very good because a tier player who doesn't understand this deck very well um, throughout the tournament, it's another reason I chose to play it because many people do not understand how Nateria cards work and they think it's like free. So they'll use their Aguidos to mill me as well because they think they're going to get free hits and not hit anything bad. But um, a lot of the time they hit either yeah. Medora or Keldo or Sacred Tree where I could get a search. This is such a these are such these are in such a weird spot right now because so many decks don't really want to play these cards. There's it's a very weird dynamic though, because if you don't play these cards, then every single tier element opponent can just go mill five against you without any problem, and they will never get punished for it. Because even if you hit like Naturia Tree or nimble angler or whatever right it's you it's always better for them than it is for you it's always better for them than it is for you if they go for the mill five if you don't have mudora and keldo in your deck right and so like decks like these like decks like this they would never run they would never run the shufflers if it wasn't for uh you need them in the in against ishizu tier right you need them against ishizu tier in this deck itself they are okay to recycle some of the Naturia resources, but you would never play these, I think, if it wasn't for Ishizus. So they, they create such a weird dynamic. A mole cricket so that I can special on their turn that's happened on turn on their turn one before of the duel. Um it's just very, very good. Um like, it's very it's so gross where you, they can do that. You know mole cricket, they fuse into like I'm sorry, they fuse into a um 
uh, Kekalos, and then you special summon Molecricket. They have the highest attack guy. You activate Molecricket immediately, summon Camellia and Sunflower. They can't attack over, and you get two monster against immediately. So you know, it's just something to keep in mind. So that's just like a small portion of what like why I wrote, ran this deck. But these cards are not great, but they are like necessary evil if that makes sense. If Tear goes away, I don't think I play them. Uh, moving on with the runic package. So this is like the biggest package. This is like, again, oh, so, like yes. this is the long game. This is how you like outmanage your opponents very nicely. So we play two copies of Fountain. Um, Fountain's obviously broken. Uh, we don't want to play one because if you lose one, it sucks. We don't have like Gary to get it back, but uh, drawing this isn't bad either because you just like don't have to search with you and you can just like just do normal because you're, you're synchroing with your uh, NGB your Baker. Synchro for two uh, months. So. Appreciate I like that two. So it's fine. I did draw back. a couple times. It was annoying. Um, it's not like amazing, but like I don't. I don't want to depend on Hugh in the search to be able to get my advantage. Like I think having having the extra was nice. Um, we obviously played three copies of Tip. It's pretty much we have all the good ones, right? It's three copies of Tip. Three copies of Slumber. Three copies of Flashing Fire. Yes. Three copies of Destruction. Three copies of Freezing Curses. Oh. Um, except for the Runics. Uh, Only 15? Someone has a very good aspect in this deck where you set up very powerful monsters and your opponent has to play Awkward, go to Battle Phase, and then try to beat over that monster that's causing all the issues. And then if you have something like Slumber to protect something like the Sunflower they're attacking to, st to stop the two monster negates, you can, uh, <laughs> you know, put them in a bad spot. Because now they waste their Battle Phase and you still have monster negates with this. Um, and they, it's just over. That Like the game, like literally when that happens, they, I swear the game's just over because you are immediately miles ahead. Um, something that I should note for this event specifically, if I did not play with tier elements for like two months prior to this of trying to get tier to work for myself, I probably would not have been as successful. So this is not a deck that I just built and have been playing this for a while. This is me playing tier for a very long time, um, not liking it in the way that it was going, um, and wanted to find a way to beat the deck that I now knew how to play. And this deck accomplished that very well. So um, yeah, and then that's that is true. It's always important for to know these. how the um, these came up in like rogue matches so well. Do that in my top thirty two, I played against a runic deck out deck, and I funny enough decked him out before he decked me out because I had a shuffler to mm -hmm. keep my deck alive. So it's just something very interesting. That, that feature match should also be up. And then um, the last cards in the main deck were three triple tactics talents. Again, this deck is made for um, this is made for uh, tier two, and that deck just plays on like both players' turn at all times. So if like if you get half missed between like mole cricket being able to summon two now and talents, like your punishment level. Um, of them doing it's that is so high, and if you draw like a beast steel, you can like, summon yeah. the beast steel, stop their stuff, their guy, use very, talents, and you can take damage free on turn from, one. From uh, you can send away, you can like Baron pop their half missing, the half missing with Baron, and the interstate might be bring back to the three and seven two monster negates. Like it's it's so crazy uh, how much this deck is. It really is. I can't stress it. This is just like the best generic card, I would say. Obviously, drawing two sucks, but it's forty-two, so drawing two of it like it didn't happen. Forty-two, maybe happened once in the whole tournament, but yeah, it was fine. I liked it. I never, I really didn't activate it that much. It was like not because like it was dead. Forty-two cards, but every time I had it, I don't. I remember this card being dead one time. Every other time it was alive. Um, so that's it for the main deck, 42 cards, like I said. Next up, we're going to go into the extra deck. So for the Runic Fusions, I feel like this is the easiest thing, is two Hugan and uh, Jerry. Sometimes, if you're Synchro Expanding, I don't think any you need more of these, but you have the Shizu cards no. to help you if you uh, At do least in the list, I didn't see any. Um, the only thing that sucks about these is that they're light and dark, so these are pretty much your opponent's and bestial targets most of the time if you Synchro with them. So that's their like downside, I would say. But this card being level 4 is like very relevant, and just something to keep in mind. Um, next up for the Synchros, I would say this is like the most important part of the extra deck, because it's where all the power lies, in my opinion. Uh, one copy of Material Beast. This card's like... I, I can't fathom playing this deck and not playing this card because I only made it like two to three times and every time I made it, it was just game. Um, it doesn't come up a lot because you don't always, like your hand's gotta be so weird to get this to where it's like optimal, like over Sunflower because monster effects are more important to negate than spell cards, but um, like negating Paralino, negating uh, like pot cards, like there's so much like, ran like uh, triple tactics talents, there's so many random cards that it's gonna negate. I mean, um, and also this like... is you summon to bring back more cricket from the graveyard, okay. it's going to turn it <laughs> right? We don't have to talk about how good Naturia Beast is, okay? Naturia Beast is completely stupid. It's completely stupid. The only reason why the card is not completely busted right now is because um, the tier limit deck doesn't play that many spells. But like against everything else, this card is completely insane. Like against Sprite, against the Blunder, the card is busted. Uh, Toad Goat, thank you for the gift sub. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the continued support. Extra deck, so it does trigger more cricket when you summon it. Um, for the two sixes, this is what you make a lot is Charge Warrior and Coral. Uh, you need no. both of them because uh, one's a tuner and one's a non-tuner. So when you make Charge Warrior, you usually have an extra Camellia that you can synchro with to go into a 10. If you make Coral Dragon, that means you already you have an extra Runic to summon uh, Jerry to go into a 10. Like 10's like the end goal, so it's just like which way you want to do it. And they both draw cards, so they're both like very good in that perspective. Um, and then for a Synchro 9, I play Trish. I do not play uh, any Synchro 8s, by the way. And I Trish. have tested them. I've tested Omega and I tested oh, no, we've played uh, Scar Rite and I tested yeah. the Tenyi. And uh, the Tenny's not great because you lose the battle phase like 90% of the time. So well, you, you, you can make this with like um, Mole Scarite Cricket, was just, like, Camellia, It's pretty much going to be like a time card, but uh, like, it dedicates more than other time cards, so I chose not to play Scarite. And um, Omega just feels like power crept in a way if it's just Omega because like one like Rhino Heart just does a full combo and it doesn't really matter. And I, like, I'm not depending on the Ishizu cards, so uh, it's, that just seems like very like wishful thinking to have that perfect scenario against an A-tier deck. Uh, but I do play Trishula, the original Trishula. This card is very strong right now because a lot of the time on Eort, like so like if they go first, uh, they like make a board and then you go and you're trying to break their board they'll like set up a follow-up in their hand 
And then depending on how their board is, if you interrupt them with like a Bestial or if you're like playing through with Mole Cricket, you can go Trishula. And a lot of the times you can hit a follow up out of their hand. Um, sometimes you have Kaleido Heart or Ruby Kalos and they don't really know what to hit. So the Ruby is just sitting there. Uh, or you can't get Kalos and just hit that. And like they go from like a huge advantage on you to pretty much nothing. Um, this card's like a very good cleanup card of like you can hit like clear the problem on the field, clear the follow up in the hand, and any like recursion or shuffler in the graveyard just can also hit and it doesn't target. So they have to chain it on the Trishula effect, which is so good. Um, and not non targeting, so it outs like something like Avermax. Very, you know, came up once, but for its worth. Lastly, uh, two level 10 synchros, uh, Baron and Sword Soul. Uh, both these cards are like broken in every meaning of the word. Um, all three of Baron effects come up to be able to pop a card, to be able to special back in the standby phase, and to obviously negate. Um, I have used Baron to like pop my own tree. Yeah, the I thing, drew, the only thing then, is like, that this deck is basically. I don't know why we're going so in depth if um, we are broken, really just, just like, presenting Pink well, Cowboys. That's up the materials very well. The standby, like, you can burn the negate very well. You know what I mean? Really like, trade clearly, there's no. You did You did not build this. You copied it. Yeah, this card is really good. And Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign. Uh, this card's also just insane. Just reducing attack points is ridiculous. I uh, beat over like a lot of like Kaleido. Like I beat, there was one game against here where I beat over a Kaleido Heart and a Rudy Kalos. So that was like insane. <clears throat> um, and then like obviously the, the effect of Banish comes up very much so because it triggers off all your Runics as well. No, it's not really Naturia Beast your, Turbo. Uh, it doesn't make Naturia Beast again, that often. Like, as well. like it, so it ends have, on like, it sometimes. So you have a lot of ways to trigger this. And again, like non-targeting Banish against Tyrolman is just like devastating. So you have like a level like 10 and 9 like non-targeting Banish is like huge. Um, yeah, so these are both crazy, and they're not lighter darks. Again, very relevant. So uh, you know, super poly is pretty hard for this deck. You don't get super poly, uh, which is good. I know it can come up, but it doesn't happen. It can't really happen to you very well if you're playing uh, pretty good. But uh, that's it for the synchros. Next up for the exceeds. Uh, this is where it the is a good explanation. These cards I didn't play very uh, much. All these regardless. cards I all day. These cards that I'm about to show you, I did not use too much. Uh, one copy of Dugaris, one copy of Babushka, one Abyss Dweller, one Dark Charmer, one Unicorn, one Access Code Talker. Um, I never made Access Code. I might have made Unicorn once, and I think I lost anyway. Dark I made to take a Magnum up once, and then just like got advantage against a tier player just to get another Bestial. But I didn't like, nice. link it up. I don't think I'm gonna set there. Um, Abyss Dweller I never made because like going like but using your go. chameleons Another and like Jerry to go into Abyss Dweller means you. you're sacrificing being Very able kind. to go into like a Sunflower or like a big Synchro yeah, or like it's like a big Synchro plus like a draw essentially. So like Dweller is a very big commitment for this deck. Um, it applies to all the rank fours pretty much. Um, it really they really only come up if you draw like two Ishizu cards pretty much. Uh, Babushka is like pretty much in here for almost just <laughs> wonder. It can come up against tier. It did not come up for me today, um, but it can come up. <laughs> um, I always summoned it once and I lost anyway because I got Book of Moon by Flunder Player and Top 16. Hey, what's going on? And Chris, then, uh, thank you for the gift, uh, though. Really? This card came up as a hand fixer. It's like thank all you guys for being There's so some kind. cheeky stuff you can do. You can like double attack like this no, guy. No, Arsai is a little sus. Um, you know, being able to... It's pretty much it. Just draw two and then double attack. I really never did the reborn effect, which is like a nice option to have. You can surprise people and bring back something like Beast or Baron. Um, oh, that's another thing. Uh, this deck can revive Materia Beast very easily um, with Blessing and uh, Camellia because they're not restricted on what they can Yeah, you so Abyss. Thank you for the reset. Yeah, Welcome back to month number two. Um, Thank you. Glad you're doing this. Which is always nice. Um, so that's it for the extra deck, and I'll go to the side deck. Uh, so starting out, I have three copies of Sarnir, and I'll do this like in order of matchups, I suppose, and three copies of Imperm. So this was for the tier matchup. Um, I would put these in, and I would take out like going like second or first, like maybe. I will be in Leon. Yeah, thank you for the seven months, White Geo Tolin. Um, I don't agree with Imperm in the side deck at all. It's something that I've seen. I saw, I saw Jesse's deck list earlier on uh, on Twitter, and he also played Imperm in the side deck, which I personally don't agree with. We've talked about it. I I feel like we've talked about this like last week. I don't think it's terrible to do this. Um. But it feels kind of weird because Imperm is one of those cards that, how do I phrase this? Imperm is one of those cards that I feel like is generically strong enough, especially right now, is like kind of good against every deck. Is like, if a card like that is somewhere in your deck, if you want to have Imperm in your deck, then why not main deck it, right? Why not main deck Imperm? Uh, if you think it's a good card, this format. Because it is that. It is a good card, this format. If you want to play the card, you can easily main deck it. There's no matchup where you are mad about Imperm in your deck, right? Tier Lament, card is fine. Sprite, card is fine. Flunder, card is fine. Uh, going first, card is fine. Going second, card is fine. If you want Imperm to be in your deck, I think you just main deck it. In the side deck, um... I don't feel like it has its place because, like, if you want it for a specific matchup, then you can probably side better cards, right? Like, if you look at your deck and you're like, okay, I kind of want my deck to be better against Flunder after siding, then there's no reason why it should be Imperm, right? Imperm is good against Flunder, but, like, if you side for Flunder, you can easily side better cards, like Raigeki, Dark Ruler, Zombie World, whatever. Like, we, we all know there's a lot of broken stuff against Flunder. There can be only one, whatever. Uh, so, like, if you want to cite it for a specific matchup, then you should have it be a more impactful card in that matchup. If you want to cite it for a lot of matchups, then 
why is it not in your main deck, right? If I'm siding impermanence in like every matchup, then why is it not in my main deck? But I, I guess it's like, if you really want a generic hand trap going second for every matchup, then fair enough. But, you know, I I think Imperm is good enough going first most of the time that you can justify the card being in your main deck if you think it's good. Like, yeah. Two cards and talents, depending on, like, who's going first or second, depending on what they saw in their deck list. But, like, uh, Imperm to not get talents and it's not kick was pretty good. And it's like a good six draw. I think it um, should be in the main deck. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Imperm, it's it. I, I, I showed you my tier limit list last stream uh on on friday no on on thursday uh and imp i main decked imperm we talked about this on thursday i i think imperm is is good right now and i think if you play it you should main deck it so that i have it in the main deck obviously um i don't really to explain that too much so that's it for um the those cards um these are for time that's all i'm gonna say uh it sucks that they like you have to play this especially remote duel like some people just take a very long time and this deck also grinds out very like long and it's like a lot of people on remote with YCSs don't scoop. So, like, so I can have like a million cards, and they're like still trying to play, and I'm like, but I have to keep skipping battle phases because of Runix, and it's like, yeah. I don't want to say it's frustrating because yeah, like, I Runix, just want to play and try to I, I, best, I, but, like, I get it. It's some like strategic element is better to just scoop, and then um, yeah, so that's that's for time cards pretty much. I mean, yeah, it's time cards. I usually sign out access code for Cowboy for what's worth. I don't know, but yeah. Um, and then lastly, I have three copies of Dark Lord No More and two copies of Twin Twister. I didn't feel the need to play uh, a lot of back row hate because I'm playing Runic, and you know Runic has Runic Destruction, which is already an MST built in that you can search with, which is pretty good. Um, so I didn't feel like I needed a lot, but I did play two just because I figured there's always, if, if you know, like this is dual purpose. Like this is for Flunder, obviously, because you can hit the field spell and the the uh, the trap card in like the draw phase, and they, like it just like stops your interruptions pretty much. You can kind of play. Um, so that's pretty much what this is for, like Rogue and Flunder. And then these were for um, Flunder again. This is also for Sprite because uh, Sprite's boards are very hard to out. You they they have like a very good recursion I game, mean, almost as good as yours. You have to like burn through their. Uh, it's a solid side deck overall. It's kind of it's just a standard pattern right now, right? We have like this very standard pattern of like everyone has a main deck that's already kind of solid against tier, so they only add a few more cards, right? Like some people have like talents in their side, some people have more bestials in their side, just like a little bit more for tier. And then since everyone has main decking bestials already. You have to have like a heavy side deck for Flunder, so you choose between like Dark Ruler, Twin Twister, uh, Zombie World, whatever. And then, I mean, some side decks have some time cards, so like it's a very standardized side deck at the moment. Um, but it is it is standard for a reason. It is solid, but there's not too much to talk about. And I think that's hold on. Oh God! Oh no! This is gonna be troll despair. I was about to say there isn't much else we can look at in terms of uh, deck profiles from the YCS. Uh, but okay, I, we're going to watch it because it's runic. We're going to watch it because it's runic, but I have, I, have a, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> no. No. No, there's no way. No. 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 There is no messenger of peace in your deck. Hey, this is KP with Team PCD with a top 32 deck profile with Pure Runic. Uh, before I get into it, some shout outs. I want to shout out to Brooke. She's behind the camera today. Since it was a remote dual YCS, uh, I was at home the whole time and there's no one. way we replaced Mystic Mind with Messenger of Peace. Started at 11 a.m. our time uh, yesterday, and we didn't get finished like midnight, so it was a long time. I don't ago. believe and you. Sometimes I was like, you know, I kind of hope I lose so I can stop dueling, but that would absolutely destroy me. So I got kind of lucky with that matchup, but um, no. I'll go ahead and get no. into it. No! Starting off, one terraforming for consistency, and then I call it the three Ds, uh, Card of Demise, uh, Pot of Desires, and Pot of Duality. These are all really good consistency cards. It can kind of Wait, how are we not special summoning? Like special oh summon my your first God. turn with Hugin no. and search a field spell and get draws. But sometimes it helps just to be able to get what you need um, easier by just acting upon duality and grabbing the, the card that you're missing. The best card in my deck, this is this is the new Mystic Mine. It doesn't make sense no. when you first think about it. It sounds like a really, really bad Don't card. Say that. But Messenger of Peace makes it to where monsters that are 1500 attack or higher can't attack. And in a way, it might actually be better than Mystic Mine. Because when you put people they under, they're going to be the one Mystic or Mine. You really limit how many cards they have on the field. And a lot of times they're going to keep their best one, and it's usually over 1,500 attack. So this can kind of just stall you out until you get the cards you need. Um, so this is really vital. It might even be better than Mystic Mine, because now our field spell slot is open for the Runic field spell. No. So I can keep activating and drawing Take cards and advancing back. cards. Take and it back right now. Um, whenever my opponents have 
uh, back row removal. They're always outing this card first. So I think that, that really back. shows how important this card is. It's kind of a dumb card, but it actually partnered it back. with the other Runic and Floodgate cards in my deck. It's very, very good. So this was a big shout out to this card. Helped me get as far as I did. <laughs> oh my as for god. Cards, Take it back. The ones, Please uh, say you're joking. Droplet and uh, Dispel. Uh, let's see. Dispelling. Um, <laughs> I, I don't really use this one that often, but these are just one of some. Mainly... If you squint really hard. <laughs> Mystic Mind. Only just for names, but um, I do use these quite a bit if I'm trying to finish getting the last few cards out of my opponent's deck. Uh, three Slumber. Three Flashing Fire. Three Freezing Curses. Three Destruction. <laughs> three tip, and three of the field spell. These ones aren't really too necessary to explain anymore. I think everybody kind of knows what these do. Um, but the whole deck, I don't play any monsters in my deck. It's all spells, and um, it's just really, really strong being able to just have a full spell hand and break people's boards or just set up floodgates and getting to draw cards in the process. So it's just a very strong engine. Also, shout out to them being on Master Tools now. Uh, for my traps, three skill drain. Oh, um, if you draw this with Messenger, or if you draw any of your traps with Messenger, you're in a really good position to win the duel. Um, but skill drain is very strong against tier. Bro, you don't need um, messenger. So <laughs> Why do you need messenger? But then the other oh, popular decks mainly for Um This is what they're going to be oh, bonus for. It can also be paired God, against uh, no. against tier because if they get only aquas going, this can be good. But a lot of times this isn't enough. So you really want to get skill drain or rivalry um, first with messenger piece, and then you're kind of sitting tight until you deck them out. That does it for the main deck. No monsters. Don't need them. <laughs> uh, for the side deck, <laughs> I play three dogwood because you know why. <laughs> Three ah! Majesty's Fiend. Um, I wanted a very strong card going first against tier that a back row removal card can't out because going into, you know, game two and threes where I'm going first, they're mainly, I don't have any monsters in my deck. They're only going to be siding back row removal. So this can be a very strong option that if I get this out on the board, it really slows things down. So even if they have Twin Twisters or Cosmics, I'm still floodgating them. So that, that's really important. Um, going second, Lava Golem. I really, really wish I would have drawn this against uh, the Naturia Beast because he had uh, like two or three monsters on board. That would have won me the match and I would be still playing right now. But unfortunately, I didn't see it. Uh, three evenly match. It's just a really strong going second card. It's really bad against Sprite, I've noticed, because they just always have... Against my deck, they're always going to make sure they have carried out and Toad. Um, but I still played against Sprite just to like bait out one of their negates, because I don't commit a monster to the board to where they can't bring back uh, their Toad. So I try and get them to use Toad just to kind of help break the board. But it's more just a stop and negate. Against other decks, it's pretty strong, though. And then three Dark Pride. <laughs> I just wanted another good going first card that is strong against the back removal. And well, wait, where's I would say Solemn that every Judgment? side deck card did their job. Um, one thing I'll say is originally I was playing Spear Modes over the Lava Golems. And it makes sense when you look at my deck. I'm playing Card of Demise and Pot of Duality. Um, so that stops me from being able to Special Summon. But the reason why I put this in the deck is this with Messenger of Peace is broken. Because as long as this is stuck on the board, they're burning themselves for a 1,000. So every standby, I take a 100. Every standby, they take a 1,000. And if I can have them under Rivalry or something Lava afterwards, Golem where this is locked on the board, it, it might just win me the game or just help. Because uh, of Messenger of Peace? Games. Oh my uh, god. The extra, it's really simple. Three Hugin, it's the best starter, and protects my board. Oh Three my uh, It can negate God. a card that targets uh, by banishing for cost, so that's pretty strong. It has another good effect. Um, three Jerry, uh, this helps uh, take out other cards on the board when it's destroyed by battle. Um, you can use it defensively or offensively. So if they go into attack you with a lot of monsters, you can summon this, they'll attack over it, and then you pop another monster so they can't attack. It's um, a war I started crime. to use this card a lot more. Um, it doesn't take battle damage, and when its uh, attack is declared on it, they banish the top two, and then when it's destroyed, I can add a quick play. So this just really helps. Like, if I have multiple quick plays in the grave, I can activate one, summon him, they attack, banish two, I don't take any damage. So usually, like, if they attack with a monster that's less than 2,000, and they have a monster with over 3,000 or something, I'll summon this, so they have to stop that attack. Now they get attack over with their big guy, and I don't take any damage. Then I'll add a quick play from grave, and then I can activate a new quick play, not the one I used to summon this, but a different one, and then summon another <laughs> oh, no, one to block. No, so no, I can actually no, survive no. a lot with uh in the battle Make phase end. Uh, besides the messenger piece oh but the reason why messenger piece is so strong in this deck Stop is showing you me have to one monster, if every piece. turn they're attacking oh and you have to summon God. one of these guys to block it kind of puts you on like um it, it makes it to where you're like in a top deck war and if you end up top decking a trap you might lose that duel so that's why this card's really good so really these can block attacks and do everything but messenger piece just does the job for you so you know so you can use your resources better uh the last cards are just one ofs that did not come up but the love but of like, god uh entis Cyber Dragon, Nova, and Mechaba. This is just against those decks that uh, makes me send cards from my extra deck to the graveyard, um, but in the Dogmatica package, but I didn't play against any of it. But I just had three open spots, and I just thought I'd throw those in there. Okay, so that's it for the deck profile. Um, I want to talk about my matchups a little bit. So in the no, tournament, no. I played against three flu decks, and... Thank God. Oh, my God. Messenger of Peace, bro!
You know what? Actually, do tell me about your matchups. And ended up playing against four tier limits. Um, the tier limits, I went two, uh, two for two. So, like, um, I lost two and I won. Makes sense. Uh, okay, hold on. Ugh. 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 <sighs> okay. Uh, I have recovered. I have recovered. <laughs> Vladis Baranovskis, Virtual World Tillemans. Let's see if this cheers me up. Sixty cards. Oh my god. So here at Mr. Vladis Varadovsky's, what did you do? I came seventh place at the Dublin Regional with a normal tier limit deck. The most normal one might Very say. Very normal. Okay. Okay, seven out of how many? Does it say here how many players they had? No. <laughs> out of cool. Eight. We want to just come into it, or do you want yeah. to do shoutouts first? I'll or do whatever? Shout -outs. We do all shoutouts after, as always. Main deck. So I'm playing 60 cards. Yep. Very normal. And uh, all double seams, yeah. Uh, two Rhino Heart. Yeah. Uh, because your normal sum is kind of important in this deck, and you realistically can't afford to play three of this. You theoretically, you actually probably should play three of this. I mean, in 60 but, uh, cards, you probably could. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I play three Sharon, no room. three Halfness, because yeah. it's the only hand trap in my deck, and three Merle. <laughs> um, so Merle sucks in this deck because oh, I don't play Link Monsters. So cursed. You only have anyway. Uh, that's all the tier monsters. You were talking I played. about that earlier today, actually. Like maybe I'll just play one. Uh, and then for the Ashizu monsters, I played three Caldo, three Mudora. One Kalbeck and one Agito. I really, I usually like playing three Agito, but in this version of the deck Kalbecks. where um, we're not There's actually playing Virtual in my World, or we're, sorry, <laughs> spoiler, <laughs> we're, we're not, not actually playing Tier Limit. Oh my gosh. Um, the only reason why I'm playing this is if for the off chance where I draw Keldo with Kalbeck, because mm. then you can go Keldo, pitch Kalbeck, add Agito, yeah. and you trigger the Kalbeck, and then use Agito to bring back there, and then, yeah. then you get a Dweller. And it's the only way to make a rank 4 in this deck, so yeah. Uh, but it's also just like a nice other consistency boost, because if you do draw these, um, if you mill them as well, it, it's pretty good. Luke, yeah. thank you for the raid. Right. Welcome, everybody. In the deck where it, your, your engine doesn't you miss the best anything part most of the time, the it's pretty good. Uh, and then the rest the of the deck... We got three Magnuma, one Drusworm. I only play three hand traps, he says. Well, these are monsters. Yeah, sure. These are, these are extenders in this deck. Okay, yeah. They so make Beatrice. Yeah. Um, God cards, we played one Instant Fusion because it's the best card in the game. How many times did you open it? Like zero. Oh, okay. There was a time I was just where it was like 60 there, cards. There was a time where I opened this and I made it close on my opponent's turn, so it didn't even matter. Okay, fair. Right, cool. Um, and then I played three Pearl Reno, one Terraforming, only one copy of Scream, and okay. I opted for two copies of Solik. I was umming and awing about whether or not I wanted to play two Scream and one Solik, or like two Solik, one Scream. I think I just we decided rather play right two here and it Solik would be a normal because deck profile. milling this is we could quite... Just stop like, it's, right now, drawing this and right milling this is a lot be better acceptable. than drawing or milling this, because yeah. well, if you somehow, discard this with Ching... Somehow, there's this entire pile of cards here. You know, like, why? what, what is this pile... Uh, you know, what is, what, what is this all about back here? Along, which you'll see later on, which is the part of the very normal deck. Yeah. Um, it means that you're able to get access to Rhino Heart or Sulik, which you really, really do need in this deck. Nice. Um, and also, it means that you can just like dump, you can dump this off of Kid Close or Foolish Burial Goods, which you'll see later on. Yeah. Um, and it means you can, you can add the other copies. As well. You can also yeah, dump yeah. it off Beatrice to get the Sulik. I was thinking you did it against me. Yeah. And then for the not normal part of the deck, uh, we have three Foolish Burial Goods. Like I said, this is the midway Stupid point in the deck profile, because as you'll see... <laughs> Because usually deck profiles will start yeah, so after we're this pause part. right now. We're just <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this, is, this is the second half of the deck. So we have the three foolish barrel goods to bridge into nice. the rest of the engine, which we're playing three copies of Lulu, uh, and then we're, we're mixing out on the good um, virtual worlds. We're maxing Wait, out on good Lili, uh, Gigi, Lulu, and we're only playing two Lao Lao. 
not for any particular reason other than the fact that I didn't have a third secret right before uh, entering. Uh, but like, legitimately though, this is the worst one to open, um, because you don't really want to brick on a bunch of level sixes, and you, at, with, at least with these you can normal summon them. Yeah, yeah. Same right. thing with the one Yan Yan. Yep. You don't really need to play more than one of this. I'm playing three E Telly, so it's, it might as well be more copies of this. And I don't want to brick on. I can respect just, like, that dead reasoning. Not having the third monsters. If I do out. brick on E Telly, I'd rather be able to summon Lulu than have Yan Yan because it's a tuner. It means you can synchro into Barone. Um, and then for the rest of the virtual cards, I'm playing three Kowloon, the best star in the deck. I don't know about um, that project. Another cool thing about this engine <laughs> is that Lulu and Malo wins, obviously, which means your Flunder matchup is free. Because you can actually special summon wind monsters in this deck. <laughs> uh, Kowloon, one of the, the best cards ever made. Hold uh, up, is this Ching the Because it's This is a fantastic mill, and also... Uh, getting off Kowloon is pretty relevant in this format just because the effect negation effect will come up quite a lot, especially against decks like Flunder. Nice. <laughs> and then uh, two copies of Chuche, or Juke, and uh, one Shenwu. So, I will. If you call this Juke or Juke against me, I'm calling the judge. I was thinking about only playing one copy of Chooch, but the problem is when you have Chooch on the board, you really do need a second copy to send from deck to grave. And also, since you're milling a lot in this deck, you really do want the second Chooch just in rotation. And it means your one Chooch can... You don't, your Chooch on board can chooch. shuffle back the other one. It's a standard, like, virtual theory as always. Um, another cool thing about this, these cards and this deck, is the fact that they can trigger every tier card, like I mentioned earlier. Mm. So if you randomly mill a Qinglong, uh, like, early in your combo, you can match Qinglong out of Virtual World, and you get value by discarding either Solik, or you can discard a tier and the Fusion Summon, which is really, really strong. Okay. Yes, exactly. Oh, nice. um, Yo, Gunther, congrats! We just watched your deck profile. Thank you for the resub. And then Shenmue is the exact same, where Reborn's a tier, and then you're able to send a monster, or send a card from Hunter Grave, and then, yeah. cool. And then, the last three cards in the deck are the three E-Tally, because like I said, it summons Lulu, or yep. Nyan Nyan if you have too many tuners. And nice. Just, good, good, just good card in general. Good stuff. It's a nice 60 card deck. Once we extract- <laughs> I don't understand any of this. I'm so confused. How do we get here? What, what is this? Oh, God. It's a little bit of a mess, but we play five fusion monsters in the form of one Kit Kalos, one Rule Kairos to make with the Kit Kalos, yep. one Kaleido Heart. Uh, this is one of the better ones just because it's a level nine, so you can overlay with it. Um, one Garura, another card you overlay with. Uh, that's kind of the. It's really weird. There's a lot it's of. Nice deck. It's yeah. a really weird incidental synergy in this deck because, yeah, like in, in the normal. Why are there still uh, 10 minutes deck? left? See, I have no idea. I don't have an explanation for it, but it's a Vlad deck profile, so we're going to enjoy every second of it. Or you do tend to go for Beatrice, but you only can do that if you <laughs> Bro, start with a pistol. Overlay Whereas with, with this deck, I'm this hurt. deck is a Beatrice turbo deck. Every <laughs> card in this deck basically just goes Beatrice, Beatrice, Beatrice. Because Beatrice on your turn lets you fusion summon, makes a bunch of dudes, or you can just go into a full virtual old board. And now, with the added benefit of the Ishizu cards, the Shufflers, your beater is also now a disruption on your opponent's turn. Um, so it means that the virtual cards get even more, like, um, they give you a lot more value. Because in the end phase, you're adding back a Lulu of GG. Um, you're able to kind of play through Dweller a lot of times. If you ha open a handful of virtual world cards and they just have, um, they just have Dweller, you have to just kind of summon a bunch of virtual worlds, like, and just go to town. Um, and you don't really need to, like, out to Dweller. Oh, it does still suck when you get Dweller, but yeah, whatever. But, like... Um, you know. Wait, hold on. Like, actual serious response. Isn't... Aren't the virtual world cards also really weak to Dweller? Because you can't banish the stuff from your grave, the, the spell and the traps. And uh, the Nyan Nyan doesn't come back. It would, isn't it really annoying still? Because, like, then you cannot make your, ch your chooch, as he says. You cannot make your chooch life, right? So, like, the whole engine just kind of... What do you make? Like one whatever i i don't know this looks weird yeah and then speaking of one dweller uh you can you you it's really hard to make this believe me i don't play more dragon so it, it made it a lot harder um but yeah uh one beatrice is the god card in the stack it's it's I literally almost accidentally helped you make it by yeah. earlier today. Yeah, yeah it was pretty funny um beatrice fantastic card you literally make it every game also with wallow these are the best two cards in the tier deck by far mm. these cards are 
absolutely insane. This is the dark in this extract because the virtual cards unfortunately lock you out of link monsters, which is the big kind of downfall. Which isn't actually that bad because when you're synchro summoning and you're making the best XYZs in the game, you don't actually it doesn't really matter if you're missing dark, sprint, or elf. Okay. Uh, and then I'm playing one copy of Enter Blathnir. I never made this. This is just for a gag because you can overlay Kaleido Heart and Shen Shen to make this, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> it it Bro, comes up a lot against... Please, for the love of God, don't overlay Kaleido Heart and Shen Shen to make Enter Blathnir. Please, uh, stop. Oh my God. No, why would you do that? Right, believe it or not, because they end with a lot of... <laughs> when you try to break their board, it's hard to kind of clear everything that they have, because if they end Unless, with... A... I mean, if you play against me, please do that. Yeah, you are invited to do that. Being with hand, it's really awkward, because they can just make their full board again. Mm -hmm. But if you end with Enter Blast, and you can banish the one blue from their hand that they usually... is the last card in their usually, hand. Yeah. You're able to just kind of walk away with the game after that. But that never happens, and like I said, you decks. <laughs> you are able to walk away, that is true. And then the last XYZ is the one Zeus. <laughs> it's the best XYZ ever made, um, apart from these two. Every Myrich, thank you for the prime. Appreciate that so much. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Card here is the best <laughs> card ever made. Um, and one star charge warrior. This is just a generic level six. Just lets you draw a card, so it draws into every, any tier or whatever you need. Yep. One coral dragon. This is removal and also draws a card, but it's a tuner, so that comes up for uh, making your synchros, which are Shen Shen, which is just a walking floodgate. Really fantastic card. Um, it, it really does wall out a lot of the decks in the meta because it means cards like Chuche just banish a card in the field. Oh, now it's Chuche again. Okay, I see. So your own Druid Swarms that you play in this deck, when you link those off, or sorry, <laughs> when you synchro with them, um, when you synchro Druid Swarm into Shen Shen, it's one of the biggest tempo swings you can have in a mirror match because as soon as a Shen Shen comes down, your Druid Swarm is going to banish one of their monsters they control. I should really start going to small regions and play stuff like that too. That'd be funny. Like try to make something super hilarious work at a small regional. Well, because while it's, it's on the, the graveyard, instead of sending the graveyard, so it means that Druid Swarm actually has an effect in, in the mirror match. And then uh, same thing with uh, Vermilion Dragon Mac. Just a really good, like generic, destroying a card in the field yeah, is in. good. Um, you can also use, you can do cool things in this deck where you use it to pop one of your opponent's cards. If you have your own Chuche, you can use your Chuche to pop your own, or your Pearl Arena, which is another cool, like, incidental synergy in this deck. You can use it to destroy your own Vermilion Dragon Mech to add back banished tuners, such as, it's just, it's just Lulu, but... And then, yeah, the last card in extra deck is Barone. So you're probably wondering, how do you make it? None of the levels really seem to make it so you can actually make this. Well, funnily enough, the good tier monsters are level four. Yeah. And level four plus six equals ten. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so that's how you make that's Barone right, this time. Um, other ways you can make it is... There actually is no other ways to make it. Is there it. anything you cost? Nah. Uh, the Anthro Blathnir is probably the worst card in the extra deck. I don't know yeah, why I kind of like though. Changing might make sense. Changing... Uh, I don't think there's ever a scenario where I needed a level, another level 10 Synchro. It's um, just that like its Spanish effect is like really good. Yeah, I think maybe Mud Dragon. I oh, also yeah, think I also yeah. think Dweller is pretty mid, to be honest. Yeah. I think these are the most cuttable cards. I think one thing you didn't, you didn't mention Dweller was is like, mid. it's 555. Five. Yeah, yeah, that was the... Yeah, the, the beautiful 5XYZs, the 5 Fusions, and the 5 Synchros. So, yeah, it's just aesthetically Synergy. pleasing. It might not necessarily be correct, but it, it looks <laughs> nice at the very least. Dweller could have been Redoer, to be honest. It looks good in a good Dylan Book screenshot. That's what matters. And then as for the side deck, really, there's actually nothing nice here at all. It's just Gamma, because I... So, Gamma's kind of a weird card in the meta, because it's not necessarily insane against anything, but it's also just good against everything. Yeah. Um, and in a 60 card deck, you really just need a high impact hand trap. And I think this is just like the most high impact one. I don't want to play Imperm because I don't think it's that high impact. Mm. But also, the added benefit of this being a psychic actually does come up because it's another oh e target. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would argue that against Flounder and against Tear, Imperm is more impactful than Gamma. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. Like, because like Imperming Kikalos is way better than Gamma against Tear. And uh, if they have map Robina, they also play around Gamma really well in, um, in Flunder. So, like, it means that you can synchro with, like, Sharon to, like, make a level 6 synchro, which is, like, fine. Yeah. Um, just, it just added, like, cute synergy. Yeah, even if you really want to, you can go real close yeah. to make Brown. Then I played three Dark Lord no more, because once again, like I said, you want really impactful cards. Yep. Same thing with three Lightning Storm. This is just for the, the poop decks. Breaking, yeah. I didn't side in any of these. None of these got activated a single time. We might talk about matchups in a second as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, no. Um, 
I didn't activate a single card in my side deck today. <laughs> oh, did you not see? No, just, I didn't. I didn't see a single side deck card today. I didn't you play did against, tactics. Yeah. I didn't play against. No thunder. I didn't play against flu. I never do this when I had it in my deck. Oh, I drew it once and I had to discard it for Chingmong. Um, I never went into time going first in game three, so this never mattered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I never do this when I decided it in. I never needed to decide this in, and I never decided this, needed to decide this in. So yeah, that's that's so pretty the side cool. deck was just it pointless. Was zero, yeah, yeah. I might as well play a zero card side deck because I've been way cooler. Yeah, yeah. that would have been good. That would have been like, hey. Jesse Cotton, you can play 14? Come on, I play zero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, as for my matchups I played against, Ron wanna play against. How many Shizu tiers did you play against? I guess this is a pretty big question. Yeah, I played against three Shizu tier decks. But one of them was like an Shizu tier Phantom Knight deck, so it doesn't really count. Oh, that's kinda um, cool. Just like, does yours <laughs> count technically then? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, it counts. And then the most sprite, uh, then the pretty sprite then. The next round was I played against Attic Mister, which is a really scary matchup, but thankfully <laughs> the, the entire deck walls it because they made a, their arrival cybers only 3,000 attack, and literally any of your fusions with the field spell up yep. get over it, so it didn't matter that That's much. Fair. And the other thing with Wallow, which is kind of a, a very. It makes it huge! <laughs> so Wallow is really important because it means you have an out in your extra deck to Avermax mm. um, because you just tribute summon. Literally, or you normal summon anything. Um, and you just attack into Avermax while this is on board. Your monster is like like 8k attack. And Avermax only gains attack if it battles a special monster. So that's how you beat it. Oh, um, okay. The other way to beat in this deck is if you don't have access to Wall already, you can use Scream to reduce its attack by 500 and then tribute summon any beast you attack over it because then it crashes. Um, okay. Round three, I played against the uh, Mirror Match. Um, then round four, I played against the mirror match again, and I won. Round five, I played against oh, mirror match, uh, like a Madolche deck, and I won. Uh, that was a that was a cool one because um, I game assume two, it's a Shizu tier, right? Dragon, they pop their backer, which I didn't know what was, and they go D by our call fusion. What is like, okay, okay, hold on, and then just make synchros. Clarify what the mirror match is right now, <laughs> please. The next one is easy to win, so I didn't have to play the tier part of my deck. Uh, and then the last round I played against Despia, where in like game three I was on like 500 life after using my Chinglung to negate their masquerade, and then I was managed to clear their entire board and make it so they couldn't bring back Wallow, uh, they couldn't bring back their masquerade to Wall one of the attacks, because I had Wall on board, and I was able to just shuffle the Masquerade back into their deck, and there's attack for a game, which is pretty cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, this deck is a lot of fun. It is just a normal tier Ishizu deck. It just bricks half the time. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> but you're also able to just do a lot of Could things. Could you, like, refine it to, like, make oh. it less than 4 60 cards? I, I like that so much about Vlad's deck profiles or Vlad's attitude is, like, just if the tournament isn't, like, that important, you just try and have some fun, uh, but still try and do well, right? You know, I I, I enjoy that. I, I I have a I have a regional coming up this weekend, where I'm not gonna play a meme deck. I'm not gonna play a meme deck, but I'm playing a regional on Sunday, in Frankfurt. The thing is, I promised you guys I'm not gonna play Ishizu tier, and I will I will. Hold my promise. I will try and find something else. I will also not play Flander. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to play yet. We're going to focus on, on that this week at some... Like, I have two tournaments coming up on the weekend. I have uh, the Master Duel Challenger Cup on Saturday. I'm going to stream that. And then on Sunday, I'm going to go to that regional. Uh, the thing is, I can't play a meme deck. Because it's actually a very big regional. Like, it's like 700 people have pre-registered. Which is, like, crazy. So I'm going to try and do something. I'm going to try and build something good. I'm just not going to try and play uh, Ishizu tier. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just going to try and find something that's not Ishizu tier that's still like cool and, and good. But yeah. Is there a zero point? Nah, the entire point is to play six. It's funny. Oh uh, yeah, um, just like thinking of like I, I'm assuming there's lots of people that are big fans of like virtual worlds. Yeah, no, virtual is like my favorite Rune. deck of all time. I, I don't think, think there's gonna be messenger Rune. Rune. where you can build it in so many different ways and they just all play very differently, but they're all like they all feel kind of the same, but also they still feel really different because of the things you're doing with Beatrice or if yeah. you're playing like a bestial deck where you're going Lubellion tribute Sulkin after you summon Crystal Wing, which is crazy. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with virtual world. Um, uh, I'm happy I, I was able to top this once and then throw this deck in the bin where it belongs. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I enjoyed that. Very fun. I don't think there's anything else here. Yeah, there's like nothing. There's like a Despiatic that got top four, but there's only an image. Yeah, very standard Despia, I guess.
47 cards, one talent. Love to see it. Yeah. What about Dominic Couch Flunder? Is there anything special about it? Is there anything special about it? Okay, why? Why do we look at this? Is it, do you want to talk? Like, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the ratio on Robina and Eaglin? Uh, the amount of shifters, the amount of barrier statues? Like, what is it that catches your eye? Like, the, the, the Apex Avian tech from 10 years ago? The, the Reza idea is, is pretty cute, I guess. Uh, also decided to play three Advent of Adventure, interesting, and three Fluanderies and the Magnificent Map, too. That's crazy. And then uh, three Duality and three Prosperity for consistency reasons. Um, I wonder how he, how he dealt with not being able to special summon, but, you know, that we'll never know since it's just a written deck profile, but that's interesting. Uh, the extra deck, we have one Axis Code Talker, one Dark. Mm-hmm. Three Zeus, interesting. One Downer, one Gigantic. So it's basically a sprite deck. Uh, with a sprite elf, too. That's nice. Uh, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn for utility, you know. Uh, and then we have some... It's a Liralisk sprite deck, basically. Liralisk sprite deck. And then we have Relinquished Anima, Win. Okay, nice, nice. Gravekeeper support is there, too. Yeah, very nice. Very interesting. Very unique. Um, yeah, no, very, very interesting. Cool ratios. I enjoy that. <laughs> Could you give me any tips for Dark World considering building it? I think Dark World is good. Um, but I think my tip, it sounds stupid, but my tip is to wait until the tier limit hell is over. Like, I think, I think you have to wait for tier limit format to end to successfully play Dark Worlds. Because the deck isn't bad. The deck just suffers too much from... The deck suffers too much from... Bestials, Dweller, and Keldumodora. That's the problem. What's the problem? That's the problem. The command for the spreadsheet is exclamation mark spreadsheet. All right, so what, do, what else do I have here? The OCG ban list we have looked at. Oh, this one. This was something I wanted to look at because I saw this this morning and uh, some people said it was good. I haven't actually read it yet. We have some new cards that are coming soon. Bop. Vicious Astroud, Dark Fairy Fusion Effect, 3000-3000, Visa Star... Oh, God, will it ever end? Uh, will it ever end? Visa Star Plus, plus one monster with 1500 attack and 2100 defense. Must be special summoning by banishing the above cards from your field and or graveyard. Hold on, okay. If this card is special summoned, you can target one other monster on the field, destroy it, and if you do, this card gains attack equal to half the destroyed monster original attack or defense. Cannot be destroyed. Wait, this is good. This is good, is it not? I think this is this is very strong. Monsters that can fuse together with with V Sama for this art. I guess V Sama is V Starfrost. Scareclaw Rykard, Tournament Rhino Hard, Kashtira Rice Heart, Infinitrack Drag Shovel, Wind Up Zen Mains. Okay. <laughs> Find the odd ones out. Out of these five. <laughs> which three are supposed to make this and which two are not? Find the two odd ones. 
that do not belong here. <laughs> it's like a it's like a capture, you know. Select the select the images with with um, cards that do not belong here. <laughs> so okay, I mean, the big question here is. The big question here is, or like, there's two questions. The first question, when we get this card, will it still be playable? Because if they hit, like, the Tier Limit and Scareclaw and Kashtira stuff so hard, like they did in the OCG, I'm not sure if this ever matters. The second question is, even if we get this card and it's technically still playable or relevant, Will the Starfrost version be the best one? Which I don't know. Oh god. Oh god, there's more Kashtira. Kashtira Axtra. It just doesn't end, dude. Scareclaw, Tirlament, Kashtira. We're in hell for an, for an entire year. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If a face-up Kashtira XYZ monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, banish one Visa Starfrost from your hand deck or field, and if you do, special summon one Vicious Astrod from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. If this card becomes banished, you can target one of your banished Visa Starfrost added to your hand. Is that good? Not that good. I mean, it's especially bad, it's especially bad, considering the, um, considering the hits in the OCG, like, the, the Kashtira deck is just not gonna see play anymore with one Unicorn, one, uh, Fenrir, I think. I, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine Kashtira still being the deck of choice, even though the, they have some tools, right? They have some tools. We'll see. But okay, I mean, this one uh, is a little... This one's a little sus, because this one's pretty strong if it sees play. Like, just being able to play... Let's just make Visa Starfrost combos and just have this one for free on top is kind of nuts. Right? Kind of nuts. There's a new archetype? What's the new archetype? Mana Dome, this one? Oh god, are they also part of this? Oh no! Make it stop! Ryan Heart, oh my god. Ah, uh, we have enough planets. Bro, if they have a planet field spell, where is the planet field spell? Oh my god, when this card resolves, you can add a mana dome monster or visa star from your deck to your hand. Oh god. Oh, okay. Oh, God damn it. <sighs> oh. Mana Dome Rhyme Heart. Level 4 Light Warrior Effect Monster. Attack 1500, Defense 2100. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card is in the hand during the main phase, quick effect, you can target one mana dome monster or one monster with 1500 attack, 2100 defense you control. Destroy that monster and if you do, special summon this card. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one mana dome card from your deck to your hand. Okay, this card is straight up like insane. 
right? This card is just crazy good. All right? It's normal summon or special summon Stratos, and it can even have synergy with like popping cards. You can like dodge Imperm or Veiler and then search. It's like it's very strong. Mana Dome Hairless? Her Hairless? No, Hairless. Fairy Tuner effect. You can only special summon this card by the procedure of its first effect once per turn. Okay. If you control a Visa Starfrost or a monster with 1500 and 2100 defense, you can special summon this card from your hand. Why this, by the way? Why not, like, uh, why not say, like, control a heart monster or whatever? But okay. So it's just a tuner that you special summon from your hand. Noted. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one hairless from your deck. Also, during the battle phase of the turn, this effect is activated. Synchro monsters you control gain 500 attack. Yeah, this is not once per turn. It's Earth Fairy. Fog. Not. Mana Dome Meek. Also a tuner. Wait, this is the same card. But. Wait. If you control, you special summon this card. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effects, special summon Meek from your deck, then you increase the level of the monsters by two. It's just the same. Wait, is this Pearl or Rhino? This is Pearl or Rhino. What is this one? Depot investigate? What is this? Is this the the Scareclaw one? And who is this little guy? Is this Meek? Who is this? Okay. Uh, I mean, both of those cards are really strong. I'm gonna be honest with you. Both of those cards are really strong. They have insane synergy with this thing and with uh, Visa Starfrost. Yeah, they have like no, this entire thing has no restriction. Oh god, no. Mana Dome Prime Heart, level 10 Light Fairy Synchro. Oh god, they're gonna power creep Baron? Please. Please don't. One plus tuners plus one light monster. Uh then they this this one is light. Okay. This card can attack a number of times equal to the number of tuners used as material. Okay, you can use multiple tuners. This card synchro summoned using a mana dome tuner cannot be targeted. If this face up synchro card summoned card leaves the field due to your opponent, you can spell. Okay, now this one's not that good. This one is not that good. If this face up synchro summon card leaves the field, spare some Visa Starfrost, or yeah, no, this is not that good. It's like, it, it can be an option for going second because you have like, it gains 500. Right? But with this one, and then you have like a 3500 that can attack a bunch of times. But it's not like that good. Mana Dome, imagine. Imagine? Normal summon, normal spell card. You can only use the first and second once per turn each. Reveal one Mana Dome or Visas in your hand. Draw two cards, then return one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. You can banish this card from your grave, then target one monster. Okay, this is basically Allure of Darkness for this archetype. Which is strong. No, it's not part of Greed, because you, you have to return. It's like Allure of Darkness, kind of. Which is good. Yeah. Okay. 
Mana Dome Abscission. Wait, does this one search all cards or just monsters? Add a Mana Dome card. Okay, adds Mana Dome card. Uh, I don't know how relevant this is. Treat it as a tuner, but okay. Uh, I guess it gives this thing an additional attack. Because it doesn't need any non-tuners. Uh, okay, Mana Dome Abscission. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn each. Target one monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, add Primal Planet Calarium from your deck to your hand. Or, if you control a Calarium, you can add a Mana Dome spell. Oh my god, this is so good. Oh god, this is so good. You know why this is so busted? I actually think the design on this is kind of cute, even though it is very strong. But like... It adds your field spell if you don't have it. But if you already have, like, that's usually, that, that would be the problem, right? If you already have the field spell, this card would be bad. But they added, like, the, the, the point to it. Like, if you already have the field spell, you can just add any other spell trap. That's very strong. That is very, very strong. That's insane. And, like, the, the, the thing is, you have to, like, consider, like, okay, for this one, you have to destroy a card you control. And for this one, you also have to destroy a card you control. But both of these don't care about that. Both of these simply replace themselves infinitely because it's not once per turn, the special summon effect. The second part here is not once per turn. Uh, when they are destroyed, if they, if they are destroyed, you just summon another one. You have like, inf you have not infinite, but you have a bunch of triggers on these. So this is technically, this is just free. It's just like add the planet or add a mana dome spell trap. Oh god. Banish this card from your grave. Special summon a Visas or a monster with 1500 uh, uh, from your hand. Okay. Little bonus. I don't think you need that very often, but sure. Uh, Go say Kai Calarium. This is the field spell. Og. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn, and you can only use the third effect of this card name once per turn. When this card resolves, you can add a Mana Dome monster or Visa Starfrost from your deck to your hand. Light monsters you control gain 100 attack for each tuner you control and in your grave. If a face up tuner you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one of those. Oh my god! Oh lord. Um, this is completely busted. This is completely busted. You're just going to pop one of these. And instead of, instead of, oh, God damn. That is so strong. That is so strong. And there is no drawback on any of this. That is so busted. They're go you're going to be able to put this into whatever shell and it's going to be so good. It's just the next uh, tier limit. How are you going to not pop off with this? It's insane. There's no restriction on any of this. Droll is an option. Droll is not even good. What do you mean? Droll is not even good. Almost not. I mean, okay, some of this searches. Yeah, Droll helps. But like these special summon directly from the deck. I don't think Droll is that broken here. I, I guess it would, it, would, it would be helpful. But that, there's crazy stuff you can do. Okay, oh, we're not done. Oh, God, we're not done. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn each. Target one tuner or synchro in your grave. Special summon it. Then if you special summon the light monster, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. With equal or lower attack. Okay, so that is revival plus destruction. If a Visa Starfrost or a monster you control with 15 or 20 will be destroyed by battle, you can banish from grave instead. Okay. When a spell trap card or monster effect is activated while you control a synchro monster, negate that activation. Then there, if there is a Visa Starfrost or a monster with 1500 attack and defense in your field or grave, you can destroy that negated card. You can banish this card from your grave, then target three mana dome. Oh my god. Oh 
God. Bro, they're just gonna end on... They're just gonna end on Baron plus this. Every time. They're just gonna end on Baron plus this every time. They have double Omni. They have double Omni every time. At the very minimum. Depending on what you pair with. This is insane. This is insane. Bro, stop! What is this? Is this now the new recipe for new archetypes? Every time we get some 1500, 2100 heart monster field spell that adds broken new combo without restriction? Is that what it is right now? Oh, goddamn. Come on. This is too strong. Who doesn't see this? Oh god damn it. Okay, when when do they get this? When do they get these? When is what is this Psy Ak set? When do we see Oh god and they have they killed everything else. They killed everything else in the TCG. No more tier, no more cash tier. This comes out. They literally have I think they have the next like 70% metagame. How do you like how do you beat this? Name a deck, name a current deck that stands up to this. Bruh. Oh god, this is so strong. All of these are so strong. Like literally, the 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 the, the fucked up thing is, I mean not fucked up, but like the crazy thing here is that like all of these are two card combos. I'm not sure exactly where you go or what you do with all of it yet. Like, you surely pair this with something. But, like, Rhymehard plus one of these is combo. Rhymehard plus Field Spell is combo. Field Spell plus Abscission is combo. Abscission plus Rhymehard is combo. Abscission plus one of the small ones is combo. Uh, Field spell plus one of the small ones is combo. Like every everything here, uh, the only thing that isn't a two card combo is these two together, hairless and hairless and meek. Those two together are not combo. They just miss a mid synchro like set level six or eight. They are super generic. You can make charge warrior or coral dragon. And this is just the first wave too. Oh god, no. Bro, the Visa Starfrost lore is a is a dark chapter. That's a dark chapter. God damn. Somehow, somehow they forgot about Somehow they forgot about the restrictions on these cards again. That all the things they learned in card design just thrown out of the window. The lore will be around nine planets? You're telling me we're not even halfway through? We're not even halfway through? No shot. This is the fourth one. There was Scareclaw. The element Kashtira, right? And now this. Therion is not a planet. The Colosseum is not a planet. So, wait, so Scareclaw, is it supposed to be the attributes? Is Scareclaw Earth, the element Water, uh, Kash what is Kashtira though? Kashtira isn't one arc one attribute. 
It's not the attributes. No, Kashira is not fire. Kashira has like all different ones. Yeah, I think it's about the summoning mechanic. I think you guys are right. Kashira is X Y Z. Scareclaw was Link. Uh, Tier Limit is Fusion, and this one is Synchro. So what is missing? Pendulum. And then technically they could make a Ritual one. Pendulum and Ritual maybe. Scareclaw is Link. Scareclaw is Link. The thing is... Okay, now, hear me out. Hear me out. If they are all about one summoning mechanic, right? If Tier Limit is all about fusions, if Scareclaw is all about links, if Kashtira is all about XYZs, where on earth is the restriction? Where is the goddamn restriction that locks you into that summoning mechanic? Where is it? Where is it? Kashtira has one? Yeah, but like... Okay, where is where is it on the other ones? God damn. Uh, all right. Well, Those cards do not spark joy. Those cards do not spark joy. Has anyone made any decks or combos with the new cards yet? I'm not aware. I don't know. I'm not aware of any of the cards. But like, the thing is, you don't have to think that long and hard about the two card combos here. Like they are sure they are for sure going to be strong. There's like no way they're not. You're just gonna splash this with something and just gonna make it broken. I'm sure we're gonna see we're chat, we're gonna see enough of this soon enough. Apparently, these come out in January in the OCG and Trust me, we're going to be here in a couple of weeks. We're going to be here in a couple of weeks. Uh, new ban list for the OCG in effect. Next set coming out. We're going to see some combos and deck profiles in a few weeks. Trust me. Sooner, you know, sooner rather than later, I can definitely see this being everywhere in the OCG. By the way, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is the healthiest meta game ever. Maybe it's gonna be hella fun to play against Barone plus this plus whatever else they make. We will see. Maybe it will bring us inner p inner peace to play around multiple Omni negates every turn. Surely it's gonna be cool. I'm to ban Barone. I think I low key. I think it should be. I think Barone had no business being made. I I I think I think Barone had no business being made. I think it's fine for level ten synchros to be strong, but I think Barone just missed the mark. It's not gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon because they haven't even milked it yet for a reprint. Yeah. I don't think it happens, but I um I think it should. But it probably won't. It should not be generic, no. No. Okay, well, that is some news at least. See you next time, Reza React. Appreciate you step stopping by.
Okay, so what is it? 3 p.m. What do we have left for the day? So I have a few things. We have the box opening still. We have the box opening. We could do the box opening yet. You know what? Let's do the box opening. Why not? Let's see what we get. I'm kind of I'm kind of itching to open that stuff. Uh box? Yeah, it's 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 kind of random. It's kind of random, but as I've already announced earlier, I have a new sponsor for the stream called uh, uh, Memory PC. They sell uh, they sell PC um, gaming PCs. They you you choose your uh, you choose the the parts and they build it for you. And uh, they were kind enough to first of all they sent me a new PC, so I'm gonna I'm gonna install that in the next couple of days and gonna have a Pog new gaming PC. Uh, but they also, as a little Christmas present, sent me a box of, what is it, Burst of Destiny? Which I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what we can pull in here that's good. Uh, they, it was just, it was not something that, like, we spoke about. They just randomly sent me this, which, uh, you know, thank you. I don't know what, what we, what, I don't know what we pull. I don't know what we can get. But thank you. The good thing here is... And this is a this is a very pog thing about this opening is you guys know I'm horrible at opening packs. It's always doomed. Right? It's always doomed. So the the good thing here is the good thing here is that because I got it for free, we cannot be doomed. We cannot be doomed. Um it it has to be it has to be pog, right? There's no way this can go wrong. Josh with the 4090 and the Risen 7. They got me like, they got me good stuff. They got me good. It's a good PC that I got. And we're going to waste it all on uh, Master Duel and DB. Our, our uh, like, the graphics card and, and all that good stuff. It's just we're going to jam Master Duel and DB at high quality. Easy clap. <laughs> It'll be looking crisp. <laughs> well, let's crack open that box. Hold on. Uh, I need to move this out of the way. Hold on. Do you still hear me well if I put it on the side like this? Uh, this should work. Put a mat on. Let's see what we get. Honestly, what are the starlights in this? Asking for a friend, because surely that's not going to happen. But theoretically, very, very hypothetically, theoretically, uh, what is there? What is there? DPE, Trouble Thunny, Snow, and Stratos. Oh my god. Okay. I have a confession to make. I would rather not pull a Starlight than pull Snow right now. Imagine if we pull Snow. Or Snowl. No fridge, oh god. Do we cancel the uh the sponsorship? Do we do we do we undo it? Do we send back the uh the PC? Oh god, we got Tokan too. Oh my god.
throwback throwback to my favorite meta game nationals this year oh okay actual throwback is this one still surely it's not expensive anymore right we're we're a little late on that right yeah it's like 10 all right Bro, it's a, literal everything is a throwback to months ago <laughs> this box would have went hard five months ago what is this i've never seen this before Long Yan, perfect for my sword soul strategy. Bro, this was such a good box. Half a year ago. <laughs> oh, magic key, insane. I swear to God, if we get three. They did that. They did that on purpose. I feel like they did that on purpose. I feel like the people at memory PC know more than they admit about this game and they have been watching the stream and we're like you know what what be the funniest box we could send to him what be the funniest box we could send hypothetically you know damn it what is this i Bro, if we pull, I'm, I'm going to take it personal if we pull three Robinas in one box and we haven't even managed to pull, we pulled one Magnemute in three boxes. And then if we pull three Robina in one box, I'm a, I'm a scream. I will scream. Oh, it's the buck, some buck card. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a goddamn. This box would have been so good. <laughs> this box would have been so good uh, a few months ago. Wait, is Masquerade still expensive? Surely not. Masquerade. Oh, I clicked the wrong Masquerade. Masquerade. No, it's not. Bro, but a few months ago, this was like 15 to 20. This was like 70. I'm sure this was something. Bro. This box is cracked in the past. This box is cracked on the past. In the past. Oh, branded in high spirits. Pog you.
You want to do a Gamba for if we get the third Robina in nine packs? We can do that. Let's do it. Uh, start prediction. Third Robina. Yep. Nope. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you thirty seconds so we can continue opening. Thirty seconds to uh to gamba on the third Robina. I know. I already know you're all gonna say yes. Wait, no. You're okay. You're all saying no. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate you. Believe. I would rather not pull a third Robina. I'd rather not have that happen. Also, the camera is very, it's not really, the autofocus, okay, well, oh. It'd be like that. <laughs> okay, prediction is over. Free Valix, thank you for the two months, appreciate you. Welcome back, thank you so much. Oh, Brandon in red. That's good. Yo, this box is insane. <laughs> That's a sick box, dude. Okay, this one is not very good. The beach roof for Ultra Rare. So this should just be supers now. <laughs> oh, what the hell, dude? This box was going to be so busted. What is this? Bro, can we go back in time? If this is the one time I get a cracked box. This is literally... Oh, God. It's doomed. Now my, now my pack luck is gone again. I used it up on the wrong set. Oh, my God. Meow's click. Pog. They had to hit me with it. I understand. I understand. Another bandit in high spirits. Also not that bad. Not worth anything, I think. But... New ship. Alright, this is all what it comes down to. This is all this is what it all comes down to. Whether you got you get your points for the Robina gamble. Wait, were we supposed to? Oh, no. Five ultras? Oh, God. You got baited. Weren't we supposed to get four? <laughs> Bro. Nope. Well, this is insane. Well, except for the snow. But, dude, this was going to be the most cracked box of all time in the past. I mean, imagine, imagine I opened that box. Imagine I opened that box a couple months ago. 70? This was like, I'm sure this was like 20 at some point or 25 even. So like 95, these were, what, what were these, like 10? At some point? I think there were 10, I'm pretty sure. The branded in reds. So like, okay, so 95, 115, and then I guess this. This was never really that expensive, but like not bad either. That's a hell of a box a few months ago. 
not today anymore. Now this is like, I don't know, <laughs> 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun opening thank you memory pc for that one i enjoyed that one that was very fun i wonder if they i wonder if they um if they get if they actually gave me the 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 flunder pack on purpose because i know that i know that some of their uh some of their people actually do watch Yu Gi Oh. so maybe they did maybe they did <laughs> Okay. Anyways, exclamation mark PC for the memory PC uh, affiliate link. Check them out. If you need a new gaming PC and you don't want to build it yourself, they will do it for you. Starlight or bust nowadays? Well, yeah, uh, of course. With a, with a current set, with a current set, you're going to need to pull a starlight. Uh, not with with a, with a non current set, of course. But that's a clip highlight right there. If first first pack of the box having a Robina, it was worth it just for that. PC unboxing when? Uh, I mean, if you want to, I could try setting up an unboxing of the PC. If that's something you care about. We can uh, do that together. I don't mind. But I'd, I'd, I'd have to, like, because uh, the, the thing is pretty big. So I don't know how well you would be able to see. I don't know how, you, how well you'd be able to see. Because the thing is... It's pretty big. Oh, I I have to not drop it. So I don't know how uh, how I could set it up because I cannot. I can definitely not open it on like my desk. There is not enough room here for that box. So you know, uh, maybe find out the specs of the new PC. I yeah, I can. I can put the specs into the description, I I think, I guess. Uh at some point. But I'm 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 looking to I'm looking to get this thing set up in the next couple of days. Maybe on the weekend. So yeah, maybe we'll unbox it together. Maybe we'll unbox it together. I'll think I'll think about it. All right. Um Okay, let's forget about let's forget about the mana dome cards real quick. I am streaming on Saturday. Yeah, I, I am streaming on Saturday. We could hypothetically, we could hypothetically um, open it on Saturday, like before the Challenger Cup starts or in between rounds, something like that. I haven't found inner peace yet. Connect the phone and do... Yeah, I could do it uh, with the phone. Did you see the new Super Heavy Samurai card? I did not. The problem is also, even if I do look at it, even if I do look at it, I don't know any of the other ones. So I don't really... I can't really put it into context is the issue. God, I forgot. I forgot I had this open. Oh, uh, I forgot. I I forgot I had this open. Uh, do we have to? Do we have to? Oh God damn it! I still don't know why we had to use the word demolished. 
I don't know why this was necessary. I don't know why we uploaded this, by the way. Like, yesterday. Yesterday, my mans or women's just went, went out there and were like, what are we uploading today? What are we uploading today? Ah, yes, let's use this feature match from eight years ago. Eight years ago. Oh, god damn it. You know what the worst thing about this is? You know what the worst thing about this is? I was literally, this is round two, and I lost round one at that YCS, which is ba that that's the only way you face Samurai in round two, by the way, is losing round one. Uh, but, bro, I don't, oh, okay, you know, you know what. To be the, the most dominant one, I'm going to play not the most dominant one, but rather Shadol, because it has the best chances um, against. Just to interrupt you, it looks like our players have started playing. Right. Uh, so let's take you there. Joshua has opened up with a mathematician dropping Skumata into the graveyard. I did not. Um, this so one, this is Joshua's hand, and uh, this is his field, as you can see. So just to bring you back up to speed, Skumata has put Falco into the graveyard, and Falco's effect has then set Falco on the field. Right, and now it's up to Jens, and this is his opening hand, and you can see he's already going for it with uh, Six Samurai United, one of the most important cards in this deck. Yo, Shang, thank you for the four months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. Well, I had a good day on so far. We'll see how this impacts it. And Six Samurai United has been Mystical Space Typhoon. So he is not going to draw into some more um, cards, which would allow him to perform even more special summons. Wait, am I losing but this? This, does not, this doesn't look that bad. Here. Or oh, any other um, level 5 Synchro monster here. Yeah. Now it's, it's probably going to be Xi'an, isn't it? Well, he's got Xi'an there up on the top of his extra deck. He's thinking it, and there it goes. Yep. Oh, okay. No, I see why. I see why. Yeah, right, I so see So here's why. an attack oh, over damn. the Mathematician, dealing first blood in this match. So Chosho down to 7,000. Unlike the Clifford archetype, Shadols aren't prone yep, to using a lot of life points early on for their own effects. No. Yeah, that is Vanity's Empanist and Double-Edged Sword Technique just set there. All right. So yeah, Falco. cool. Yeah, Falco's flip face up. And uh, Vanity Sentinel is a card we mentioned before, preventing your, preventing, well, mostly your opponent, but also yourself from special summoning monsters. Ah, yeah. And since ah. he has already the mm. GN on the field, this is the card. Let's bring that up for you guys as well. Oh, there we go. Can't bring it up for you. Um, so we're missing this one card in the card database. But uh, we can explain the effect of Xi'an for you again if you haven't been playing against the Six Samurai for a while. Skumata is targeting that Xi'an there. Yeah. And so as the six Bro, imagine, imagine a time where you could just do that and no one cared. Like the just moving your cards and everything. Six Samurai do. They can let one of the other Six Samurai die instead. It didn't matter back then. All right, so once per turn, during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell or a trap card, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And if it would be destroyed, you can, of course, destroy another face-up six samurai, which is what most of the six samurais are doing. Yep. So uh, here we go. Jens applying even more pressure, and uh, Joshua doesn't seem happy. Then again, he's known for his poker face. <laughs> and here comes the Naturia Beast. Hog, you! To Joshua's open field. I'm not unhappy. I just have a poker face. You're just seeing six samurai yeah. completely smashing. Yeah, they they're dealing. I mean, it's one of the most explosive decks. They are definitely known for that. And uh, these are Joshua's options in hand. Wait, what do I have? Hedgehog, beast. Okay, this hand is way too slow. So uh, he did draw into a beast just now. Let's let's just have a look there at the. Uh, let's bring up the. He's thinking about his options here. And this is uh, uh, this is the tech that a lot of Shadow are using now. Wait, why is this in attack Basically, position? As I say, filtering black, well, dark, and light monsters into the graveyard. Right. Last so what's his what's his next step here? 
Oh, okay. uh, he has special summoned the Wyvern Buster, attributed the Beast. We're doubling the, the, the Naturia Beast, I guess. Clap Serpent into hand. And then summoning that in defense. And so what yeah. looked like Jens was overwhelming Joshua just uh, a second Bro, deep ago. Prison. Might be turned around. Yep, and there comes down a Grandmaster of the Six Samurai. Yeah, his draw for the turn for Jens here. The Grandmaster is a very old card as well. Very old, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's the Grandmaster, so he must be some little bit older than the, the younger guys. And uh, he can... This was a big deal when this card first came out. Yeah, Just huge. Be, being allowed to special summon a big beat stick and like that. With, with no requirements almost. Like yeah. you, you always want to have a six summon right monster on the field cool. anyway. So it's not like this is a big drawback for you. Not like a Cyber Dragon, for example, where your opponent have to have <laughs> something <laughs> Bro, you so at bad. the same time shouldn't have a monster. Makes all Wait, the Why is this in attack position all again? Right. So Am I Joshua tribute setting beast? Did draw into a no, white dragon summoning beast. Buster, if I'm not all too mistaken. And, yep. and he special down. summoned it to tribute it for a beast, uh, which is attacking the Grandmaster of the Six Samurai. And uh, the face down card is a dimensional prison. Another only, but which in this situation, goalie. Yep. And my god, wow. Jens Bro. Eckert with his age old card. Deep prison. No one played deep prison, by the way. That was not something you had to play around. That was not something you had to play around, by the way. Like, that was not... Ah, oh, it's Yugi yeah. style. This is like 10 years ago. <laughs> not quite, but let's make it like 7. He just overwhelms Joshua. <laughs> you can tell he's in a pretty cheerful mood here. He is giggling. <laughs> giggling in the face of his opponent. <laughs> Joshua is like, oh my god, camera's on me. Not right now, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, on the right-hand side, you have a dimensional prison. It's it's better again in a in a field with lots of monsters <laughs> that you can easily return from your graveyard. Plus, it doesn't destroy. Sometimes yes, that's also a. Very sometimes big you deal. just know it's not so, your um, day. Sometimes you just know because I remember here. I remember round one at this tournament because this is round two and I already lost round one. Uh, and this is also I think this is the first YCS after I won YCS Madrid, or maybe two YCSs after, I don't remember, shortly after. Uh, and no, I think it's two YCSs after. But like, I think at this YCS, there's nothing was going right for me. It's like, I actually, after going 0 and 2, I, I, I almost made, I, I think I went like 7 2 and then lost round 10 or something. I don't know. But like at this point, it's just some, at some, some days you're just feeling like it's not going your way. And I think that's one of the days. I mean, I, I expect Jens to be more than prepared for this matchup. He's got three copies of Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. Yes. That's, that's going <laughs> to come in right here. Uh, the Max C, just to be able to issue the Max C challenge. Yeah. Though I really want to be special summoning everything whilst that's there. He's got two copies of Wiretap, which is also a very interesting card. Wiretap together with Vanity's Emptiness is like almost a question of what do you believe in? What's your, what's your preferred way of playing? And um, Oh, the I, old Joker. I've seen some players the old Joker. I don't know what that stun. one is. I lost because it. I always had one opponent, of those Joker so he, cards he that my mom gave get me. get any trap card effects for the turn. And at the same time, during that but turn, I don't have you it can anymore. still special summon monsters. Wiretap, on the other hand, is uh, really good since it returns the opponent's card to the deck. So he doesn't doesn't really get it back no. in terms of yeah. I mean, looking at y uh, Joshua's side deck, uh, he's not I didn't lose it. She gave me a new <laughs> one. I think no one I still have. No. I mean, he's got two Denka Seca, the Maxi maybe for just to stop a few, kind of ward off a couple of special summons. But other than that, there really isn't anything in there yeah. to, to stop Six Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is quite Someone interesting. Redeemed Sometimes Hydra. one of these older decks that have been hated out of the competition, yeah. they come back. But nobody really knows. This was not the YCS I won. You're, you're no, always I didn't going top from, this YCS. from A to B, and you then you're going from B to C, but you're never going you're never back going and backwards, like. Yeah. What, what was good like five years ago? And sometimes uh, I I know that a lot of players are just waiting for the moment when uh, the gladiator beasts are going to be a thing again. I tried gladiator beasts. Why uh, why do they not work in this environment? They do. <laughs> uh, they're just quite slow. I mean, with the with primal origins came. I believe, I'm not quite sure, Augustus, um, which is 2,800 attack. Um, when he's special summoned by another gladiator beast, you can special summon a card from your hand. Uh, but that also counts if you special summon another one of him from your hand. 
So you can bring out three level eights. Wow. Uh, in one this turn. is 2014. And <laughs> I don't know why they re-uploaded so this the yesterday. Opening five of Joshua Schmidt, who does have a Shadow Dragon. I think, by the way, this is the one from the remix, the one you just heard. I'm pretty sure. Another monster. So here we see the opening five of Joshua Schmidt. That, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, 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 that's 100. percent That's the one. And two copies of Sinister Shadow Games. Both of these Sinister <laughs> Shadow Games have been set. And. Um, yeah, that's a very conservative start, but not very surprising for the Shadol deck now, is it? No, no. And uh, with the Sinister Shadow Games, his um, Falco is already live. His opponent, Jens, did draw into Six Samurai United, which got activated right away. Um, he's got Sheehan's Dojo as well. And uh, now he's going for <laughs> special summons again. These cards don't stay in hand, so t let's take a look at his field again. So Six Samurai United, very easy to understand effect. Whenever you summon a six samurai, you add a Bushido counter. So what do on we it. do here? Have max two Hold on, we said Fal did we set Falco, or did we set Dragon? It's either way, it's doomed. We I, 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 we probably send. It's such a weak hand. You send Dragon, I think. Two counters on it, and you can then send it to the graveyard with two counters, which is what you do most of the time. To draw two cards. Sheen's Dojo on the other hand. We also got it here for you, you guys. You probably go Dragon Pop um, United. Give us a second for it's the card It's a very awkward hand that I have. There we go. And it does the same thing in a way. Yeah. It also gets counters whenever you summon one. And uh, you can special or summon dojo. from okay, the main guess, deck. Meh, we pop Dojo. Um, um, I guess it's... Six Samurai uh, Monster. Sheen is good against Shadol is the problem. <laughs> with a level less or equal to the number of Bushido counters. Doesn't really matter because that Sheen's Dojo is now gone. Uh, basically, due to a Sinister Shadow Games, bringing down, I believe that was a Dragon? That's a Dragon's Effect, is it not? Yeah, that, that's that Dragon's Effect. Yeah. So, um, okay, he's well... Drawing two. What are ru the rules on typing in chat? Is there an English-only rule? Uh, there is no English-only rule. You can ask me in German, but I will usually answer in English. Just so everyone can understand. But if you ask me something in German, I will still answer. But, yeah. Good for Joshua to not fall behind even further. That's also in the remix. Good for Joshua to yes, not fall behind that's in the even remix. further here. Um, Joshua doesn't really, uh, didn't really draw into any cards from his side decks so far. Whereas um, Jens has now drawn into a second... Can I ask in French? I mean, you can try. I would but I, I probably won't understand. Right Definitely. Yeah. You want to make sure that the remaining cards in your deck are like they are all live. Unless you run into a situation where you need one particular monster. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. Is he going to activate the second copy as well? No. No. He's going to keep that keep that back just in case. It's you don't want it to get negated. Uh, I think I, I actually think popping the dojo was correct because they don't now don't have a tuner. All right. So um, oh, we still lose, of course. Another <laughs> they have emptiness Kizan's again. Oh, Kageki, God. Kisan. Oh, and, God. Uh, the of the six samurai. He could again go for Shien. Oh, Emma. No, he's just a, I think he's just explaining a few things there. Now, it's rather interesting because when you think about it, emptiness was at back kind of three, makes sense yes. now that reinforcement of the army is now back to three. Hmm. Or any warrior based deck. Every <laughs> yeah, there basically. are a few of these. Yeah. I mean, you. Or the side view. More at noble knights, and I'd really like to see if we can get one of those up. Yeah. So um, he now equipped the spirit. He he didn't have access to Shien, by the way. I was mistaken there. Uh, he's missing the tuner, and uh, but then again, the spirit is such a such a flexible card in this in this archetype. And um, he still got two ca uh, three cards in hand. In fact, Vanity's Emptiness, a Compulsory, and a Kisan. And he again goes for attacks. And Shadows aren't really known to have. Is Shadow Games once per turn? No, right. So I guess we use yeah. it here to send like beasts. And uh, interestingly, early, um, Joshua is now thinking whether to uh, activate the second copy of Sinister Shadow Games. Well, if he gets that Sinister Shadow Games, early you go Shadow Beast, oh, uh, Shadow oh, Games, uh, Send Beast. Because if you, if I Falco but revive the Dragon, Falco, I do believe that its effect is that when it's for or a Hedgehog because we need fusion from the graveyard. Uh, it's really just thinking. Oh yeah, it's Hedgehog. It's Hedgehog, and we're gonna die to emptiness. Oh yeah. god. Oh god. I already go see with, it. Uh, the dragon I already the see it. And says and the hedgehog. God damn. Back the hedgehog from the dead. 
And uh, Jens is checking the defense again. We, we've actually seen that players getting um, nervousness, getting the better of them in a way. And uh, they attack into a monster that they can't beat. Um, yeah, so, so he's just double checking. Can I attack over this? You really don't want to fall into the trap. No, this is the hedgehog for you guys. And Joshua just keeps searching, thinning out his deck here. But at the same time, he's taking the damage. There's uh, no way to stop that. And the Hedgehog is threatening a Shadow Fusion. And is it is it good for Jens that he... I mean, Xien is a card that is introduced from the extra deck, All which the is a, a drawback against the, um, against the Shadows because of Shadow Fusion. But it can negate the Shadow Fusion, so... <laughs> but he also now has a uh, Dark and a Light in hand for that Shadow Fusion which I do believe means that he can now make a construct. Yeah, so Joshua just drew into the Shadow Fusion. Let's take a look in, at his hand in just a second. Here's the Oh my god, Jens. that's so crisp. The and, ulti uh, Lila? Oh my god, I don't have that type of... I don't have that type of Joshua flavor so anymore. Minus, minus I don't own Lila, those cards yeah, anymore. It's just been okay, summoned. Turn to defense. Let's see what he tries to destroy there. What would be your choice? One of the three face downs, most likely, yeah. Breakthrough skill would be a helpful one to get rid of. <laughs> so well, Lila it's used. stays uh, in attack position and doesn't destroy. Well, he doesn't get to send any cards from the top of his deck to the graveyard during the end phase. No, if he's not going to get that now. Lila would hang around until the end phase. Maybe that was Jens' uh, plan here. I mean, currently there's also a compulsory evacuation device and Vanity's Emptiness. You kind of want to get rid of all of those to be able to play anything. <laughs> there's a Shell uh, Fusion and the Vanity's Emptiness is going to get flipped. Yep. This is very, very bad news for Joshua, who's now left with a White Dragon Viva Buster and a Shadow Dragon in hand. And uh, both... Lila just sitting there ready to be... Beaten. Yeah. And uh, both of these cards, they don't really do anything here for him, now, do they? <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> oh, God damn. There's nothing that he can do. And uh, while, while this is a very familiar pose with Joshua, he, he often sits like that. And it doesn't really mean anything. He does have a plan and everything. But at this point in time, he doesn't seem to be happy at all. From just now, dead. He proceeds with the battle phase. And uh, now Lila gets returned to the hand. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, speaking of damn. hands, He's Joshua Schmidt extending his hand, <laughs> knowing this is over. There's nothing I can do. Uh, uh, Jens Ecker having the, the perfect string well, of cards for yeah. that particular matchup. It'd be and like that sometimes. Like totally <laughs> wiping the floor with Definitely. Joshua Schmidt. We, Wait, I, this is over? Is that over here? And like uh, Jens Ecker having the, the hands. He's Joshua Schmidt extending his hand, knowing this is over. It's <laughs> not <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> well, chat, we've been demolished. <laughs> we have been demolished. <laughs> of Joshua Schmidt. <laughs> Well then, <laughs> it is true. I got demolished. That was a bad weekend for me. Oh God, I remember this. I remember that weekend. Looking back, I also, I don't think my deck was that good. Looking back, I don't think my deck was that good. The the Shadol version with the with the baby dragons. I don't think it was that great. It was basically... Uh, it was basically the... The format was Cleefort, BA, and Shadol. And I was always, back in the day, I, I just always played Shadol. I loved Shadol, even though I, I think for that YCS, right after Klee came out, I think um, BA was better. I think BA was better for that one YCS. And that's the only time, that is the only time I should have played BA. Any other year, any other tournament, it was never BA.
For this tournament, I think it was BA. Yeah. Losing early rounds is way worse than losing in like round seven. Uh, I mean, it's sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. It's like for tiebreakers, it matters for tiebreakers because at the end of the tournament, when they cut to top 32, sometimes there's a lot of people with the same record that some of them make top cut and some of them don't. And then the deciding factor can sometimes be how early on you lost. But I think it's the biggest downside of losing early is just like the mental... Uh, the mental like it's much more draining it's much it's much harder to to do well in a tournament after you lose early because like it's hard to come back like you learn it after a while but it's hard of it's hard to to come back from losing early because it just pulls you down right it's something you have to learn and it's something that i mean most people still struggle with even after a while but yeah okay so we have about an hour left we have about an hour left, and this is pretty much all that I had planned for today. So there's two things that I want to do this week, and we can just decide what we want to do now. Um, I have two tournaments this weekend. I have two tournaments this weekend. The first one is I have the... Let me see exactly which day it is. I have the Master Duel Challenger Cup, December 17th. 512 oh it's a big one the 512 farfa um master duel challenger cup wait 17th and 18th it's two days because then i can't play it says only 17th oh 18th is yeah okay okay that's what you meant okay no so, okay, 17th, I have the Challenger Cup. 17th, I have the Challenger Cup. And on um, Sunday, on Sunday, I have the German Open. Yeah, I have the German Open on Sunday. And I need to prepare a deck for both tournaments. I will say the format that I have less practice in is Master Duel right now. Because for the current TCG format, I told you guys I'm not going to play... I'm not going to play tier. But all the other decks too, I have like solid practice with. For the Master Duel one, I haven't had much practice yet. So we might spend, we might just spend an hour experimenting with Master Duel a little bit for the Challenger Cup. But no worries, no worries. We're going to do both things this weekend. I'm going to prepare, um, I'm going to prepare for the regional on stream as well. I don't know exactly what I want to play yet for the, yeah. Um, hold on really quick. I need to make a quick toilet break though, and then I'll be right back. And then I think I may, we'll hop into, I think we'll hop into Master Duel for an hour. That sounds fun. Okay, I'll be right back.
Okay, hold up. Uh, let me switch game categories real quick. So the thing is, I'm torn. I'm torn between two things, chat, in Master Duel. Did you sign up for the Challenger? I did sign up for the Challenger Cup. Yeah, by the way, uh, there is still almost 100 spots left in Farfa's Challenger Cup this weekend. So I'm just letting you know, in case you have not you have time on Saturday and you want to play, they are completely free. They are organized directly by Konami. So they're official tournaments. So if you are from Europe, if you are from Europe and you want to play um, in the Challenger Cup, feel free to sign up. I know, it is sad that it's EU exclusive. I know, it is EU exclusive, unfortunately. Alright, so... I am playing in... I, I am personally playing... Is there multiple this weekend? I am playing in the 512 player Farfa one. Is this the first one, by the way? Or which, one's, which one is kicking it off? Is it that one? The 512 ones, you can do as many as you want. I think so. I think so, yeah. Farfa is the first? Okay, yeah, then we are playing in the very first one. Cool. Um, let me actually, let me clean up my, uh, let me clean up my decks a little bit. My love, my love, I'll leave you. You can stay. It's been a while. But I... Okay, so if you are playing... If you're playing in a in a Challenger Cup, what are you bringing? Let's start that way around, chat. What are you bringing? I'm like... I'm torn between two decks, basically. I'm thinking about two different decks. I'm thinking about bringing, obviously, Despia is really strong. Obviously, Despia is one of the favorites. But I also really want to try and make something with um, Runic work. Those are the two options I have. Runic is incredible, but I feel like it can easily get sided against. Well, there's no side deck. Right? There's no side deck, so... Don't you think blind second is really good in the format? It could be. X crazy. It could genuinely be. You need a good game plan. But I think in a best of one style, no side deck, I think something like that can work, yeah. You could switch it up between decks during you can? I guess I have to I have to read the I have to read the tournament instructions. For now, let's just jam. You know, we jammed a lot of we jammed a lot of uh runics last time. Let's quickly climb a little bit using Despia. Uh this list this list looks crisp.
You get to use any deck that was created before the tournament started. And you can switch between... Okay, that's interesting. You can. You are allowed to switch decks as long as you built them beforehand. Okay, then we're going to have to... We're going to have to build a couple of decks. That's kind of crazy. Uh, we have to start with Branded Fusion here. I would love to go Alibur for Lost, but if the Branded Fusion gets Ashed, we need the field, the, the Despia field spell. Uh, what if you like? I've got this one. And we pitch Edgem. We pitch Edgem Chain. And then we go ad lib. And then we make this. That changes a lot of things. Uh, the question is, do we make... Double Masquerade here. Probably. Right? For Double Masquerade, we have to search the Despia Theater. Uh, yeah. So if I go... I can also go branded lost here, or I can just get branded in red and make one masquerade. No, we don't need to get branded in red just here. I'm just gonna get this. We can just go okay, I have a I have a plan. Uh, activate this, because we're going to fuse it away. We're going to keep snow in hand here. I wanted to, originally I was going to... Wait, no, we're not going to. This way, I did it this way instead of going for double masquerade because it gives me branded opening in the graveyard too, which is quite nice with the Albion. And we established the branded lost for the opponent's turn. Lightning storm. I mean, we have branded opening, right? Wait, what do we have in the grave? Oh, snow. But well, technically, you could just summon in defense. Apparently, you can swap decks. Apparently, you can. I've been playing your runic synchrolist and destroying people with it. It is a very fun deck. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, normal summons Alubur, not using the effect. 
There's no dragon. That's fine. We're gonna have to make a bunch of decks ready then. We're gonna have to make a bunch of decks ready for different scenarios. Like, depending on what we're facing. Like, we're gonna have to be... We're gonna have, um... We're gonna have to make decks ready that have, like... No maxi in case we play against Flunder and whatnot. You know what? Okay, I don't know what is happening here. Uh, okay, sure, whatever. Okay, I think my man's just surrendered. Cool. <laughs> what is he cooking? I don't know. Okay. He may have thought that Masquerade is a dragon or Mirror Jade is a dragon. He could go for Albalanatus. Yeah, that's the first thing I check too. Making sure that I don't have any dragons. Yeah. Boom. It's such easy gems. It's such easy gems, these events. I forgot that. Like, that's... I. The thing is... Whenever I return to Master Duel, um, I keep noticing how nice the gem economy is, right? Even though, like, some pack openings sometimes are frustrating and whatever, I genuinely think if you play this game actively, you'll have, like, all the cards after a while, right? Even without... Like, I know I spent money last week when we built Runix, but that's... I think that's only because... I, that's only because I hadn't played in forever, right? That's only because I hadn't played in months. Uh, you know. So, like, I... Yeah. And then... Oh, also... I... I don't actually know if I think it's that bad that the card pool is different. Because, of course, it sucks... It does suck that we cannot test here for the actual format. Uh, at the same time... At the same time, I'm kind of enjoying the fact that it's different. You know what I mean? When we're playing Runic Despia, you think that makes sense? I feel like there's not that much. I guess there is some. Wait, what is happening? Oh, they get one for Metal Cruncher. Okay. Earth Machines! This game is so slow. No, it's not. That's Yu-Gi-Oh, my friend. Yu-Gi-Oh works like that. It's actually not that, uh, not that bad. For a simulator. In my opinion. The animations? I think it's fine. Bro, Despia mod check? Hello? Ah, my pure fright for deck. Can I? I cannot summon anything. Holy shit.
That's why I like three tragedies. That is why I like... But I. it looks like we are getting another turn. <laughs> Thank God. Imagine the chains were runic cards. And ironically, Scrap, this deck does get, doesn't get worse by playing uh, runics. Like, you could, actually. It's just a matter of you don't have room for it, I think. Surely we draw a, a, a Despia card now. Surely. Wait, can this not attack? Okay. Uh, special summon it. I'm gonna droplet that. Doesn't Liebe have piercing? This is not Liebe. This was the other one, Dora. The Explorer. Oh! Wait, no. Oh, God. I did not know that. We've been outplayed. Bro! Uh oh. Are we being demolished again? What the hell was that? We don't... Uh, that was unwinnable. We will find the dumbest runic deck. I will have a couple runic decks prepared for the Challenger Cup. I also wonder if I have to try hard and, and stream with like a delay. I kind of don't want to to keep chat interaction intact. Okay, I, okay, real hand pog. Uh, I think opening here grabs us tragedy. I think it's opening, pitch, chain, grab, tragedy, branded, lost, poly. Yeah. <laughs> tragedy. I guess you can summon it. Doesn't really change anything. Wrap patchwork. Uh, and then we just lost into Masquerade. Or honestly, maybe Queridus is better blind to turn one. If you can just make one. What do you think? Maybe maybe Queridus is better. Well, like in the mirror match. In the mirror match, uh, Masquerade is, a, is better. I'm just going to make Masquerade. Because we do have the option to potentially make a second one on their turn. If we don't want to go for Chimera. Although, you all, almost always want to go for Chimera. I'll just make it in the fence. Even though I'm not sure if this is correct. Putting Masquerade in the fence. I'm not sure. And now, with loss, the question is, do we grab ourselves... The Merc. I guess we grab the Merc to play around Nib. Or we grab Albion, but... Nah, it's Merc. Where is this also good? 
Uh, maybe it's better. Not sure. We could have done this slightly differently. Because now we either don't have Mirror Jade Banish or Branded in Red Banish. Uh, I think I'll leave the Mirror Jade on the board. I don't think you have to connect your master duel to Discord, no. And I'll just send the second opening because we don't need that. And then you need the same in-game name as Discord. Okay, well then, okay. But you can change your in-game name whenever you want. Can't you? Dark hole. Hundred percent runic, is it? What are you? If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. If this card is normal special summon, place three counters on this card. It cannot be destroyed by battle. At the end of the damage step, this card battle, remove a counter. If you cannot destroy it, you can banish this card from your grave, shuffle all. Okay, your relevant card. Boss rush. You cannot normal summon or set during the end phase of the turn that a BES monster or a big core is destroyed. You can special summon. All right. God damn. I thought there was supposed to be real decks now. Is what I've been told. But this is why I chose to play Despia, because Despia tends to be faster than um, Runic in the lower ranks. I'm a little I'm a little sad that the second stage is on the weekend now because I have two tournaments and I can't play the second stage. I think that'd be a fun stream. I think that would have been a fun stream to to play the second stage of the Duelist Cup even though it's probably for nothing, right? From what I've heard, you don't get much for it. Um, it's a little awkward here. I guess we do have to go for Lubelion. I don't really have a card I want to discard. Tragedy and Albaz. Because what, what am I discarding? Definitely not Maxi. Uh, 
I do not want to I do not want to discard Polly. But then if I discard Adlib, I could just go No, Adlib is fine. Adlib is fine because I can just go um Aluber Surge branded in red and just mask and just pass with Mirror Jade and branded in red, yeah. Uh, if they have Imperm, this is still okay. Valor is fine. We just uh, called by that. Even though it's honestly not even that strong. But I might as well. Might as well get that Mirror Jade out if we can. Unless they have another hand trap. Have you thought about Super Poly? I just don't feel like Super Poly is that strong. I, I'm looking at my deck and I'm like, what do I take out? Like, Droplet is like the only card that is cuttable, I feel like. uh, Because nah. I'm definitely not removing Ash from my deck when we're playing Despia Mirrors. Uh, no, Garura is not in Master Duel. Is Droplet even good when your opponent has a lost? I, so the reason I added Droplet initially, very, very initially, before we, like, yeah, when we started building the deck was because everyone said that everyone is going for the Expulsion Lock, and uh, I felt like I wanted an out for that. That's why Droplet is here. And to be honest, most of the Despia decks I have faced so far did go for that lock, even though I think it's awful. I think you shouldn't be doing that. Um, But... Most people seem to disagree and go for that. So I felt like the droplet was a good safety kind of net. Or any kind of stupid stuff. Marine Sus, I am going to banish your normal summon. Lightning speed. Okay, so we st we started with we started with normal summon and then we destroy the mirror jade. I see. Um Regus the Pelia or Masquerade? What we'll query this? It might be Dragos the Pelia here. Although, oh, I'm gonna make Dragos the Pelia. Like this and that. In defense position, important because of Lightning Storm, of course. And then we trigger. Add lip to summon the mask, uh, the mirror jade back. Alba's decks are so ugly. I like Alba's decks. I think they're great. I like this Uh Rod coins. Thank you so much for the prime. Appreciate that. Getting us closer to that sub goal. Thank you so much. Boom. I can, I mean, like, okay, I will admit, I will admit Branded Fusion is too strong. I will admit Branded Fusion is too strong. But overall, the archetype, the card design and everything besides Branded Fusion, pretty nice.
Uh, this deck might need a lure, to be honest. This deck might need a lure of darkness. Do we set tragedy or do we set merc? Uh, I'll set tragedy. Strongest despia opener. Neither. I think we have to set one just to best. We could set maxi. We could set Maxi, you're right, maybe. I just set Tragedy because um, there's a chance that they pop it and we get a Surge that way, which with Mercurial, we don't get that. It's just the question is if they push through the Maxi, and I I feel like setting a monster makes it a bit harder for them to push through the Maxi, right? What do you think about Foolish and Despia? I think it's playable, but I think Gold Sark is better because Gold Sark can get you Tragedy or Merc. And Foolish can only do one of the two, like only Tragedy. So if you already have Tragedy, then Foolish doesn't do anything. Uh, no. Do you not play a Link one? I do not play a Link one. I don't think there is a good combo um, for that. Gold Sark is your. I mean, you can play Foolish. Foolish is also fine. The advantage of Foolish over Gold Sark is that it puts the tragedy into the graveyard, which is better for it, right? Like, tragedy in the grave is better because it gives you follow up the next turn. <laughs> there is a Mrs. Schmidt, yes. Well, like, very soon. I am engaged. New, new. Okay. If you hard draw Banner in Red with Tragedy, then sometimes the Link 1 is good. Yeah, but it's like very niche. I don't know what to take out. Like, you could. You could consider it. Okay, they are disconnecting. Okay, Pog. If we were losing... If we lost to Ogdodic because we bricked, I didn't mad. No, not gonna lie. Oh, wait. No, I want to change... Uh, edit. Let, you know what? I want to play Allure for consistency reason, and I I really want to play the third tragedy. the The problem I have is what do we take out? Because I'm not trying to play forty four. I mean, I could. We could take out Droplet. I would love to take out Droplet. Snow. Uh, snow is nice. Snow, Field Spell, Patchwork Engine. I like the theater. Uh, this isn't Runic. Yeah, it's not Runic because uh, it takes a long time to ladder with Runic and we're in the low ranks, so it's kind of a waste. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to commit the crime of playing 44 and see what's cuttable first. I want to see what the, what the cards are that I don't like first. Since it's not for like the tournament yet, it's just for testing. Do you still think Synchro Runic is the way? I think it's good. Uh, I, I think it's good. I haven't tried any other Runic decks yet, but we're going to do that this week too. The tournament is on Saturday, and I think it starts at 11. And it's going to be long, so we're uh, hopefully, if we make it deep, we're going to have a long day ahead of us. Unfortunate turn of events. I am planning to stream it, yeah. I am planning to stream it. I'm not sure if I will put a little delay on it so we don't get sniped. 
throughout the event because that'd be annoying. Maybe like three minutes or something small like that. Maybe. Uh, so we grab the... We hope... We basically just hope that one Masquerade makes us live and the Maxi resolves. Uh, because if the Maxi doesn't resolve, we are in trouble next turn because we need to draw basically access to Branded Fusion. I would put a huge delay. Nah, I don't want that. I don't want to do that. You can stream from spectator view. No, but I want to talk about my options and my plays. I don't like that at all. Because if I, if I don't show you my hand on stream, what am I going to talk about while playing? Oh, good start. Good, good. Labyrinth. Okay, interesting. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Maxi is still okay, I think, against Labyrinth. Ooh, a Luber the Duber. Okay. Hog, very good. Let me get Branded Fusion. Hand it over right now. IDP? That does not negate that, but sure. I will draw cards with Maxi gladly. Thank you. And now we even drew called by the grave for an ash blossom potentially. Oh. Special summon a fiend from hand or grave. Well, Silver Castle. Okay, she big. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to the activation of your normal trap cards. You can only use, you can target a normal trap, but it cannot. Boom. I can Chimera now, but I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with the Brand Diffusion, see if it resolves first. Because I would prefer to go for Chimera Pop 2 instead of Chimera Pop 1. Compulse. What do they do now? When you can target and set it to your field. If another monster leaves, you can destroy a card in your opponent's hand at random or their field. Um I shall I think we make just we just make mirror jade here. We have to return our uh masquerade, but that's fine. Uh, and we grab ourselves that. Trigger edge gym chain. Nah, we're Gucci. They can pop Mirror Jade here, but... Yeah. I mean, we just have way too much. See, Despia just climbs faster. That's why I like Despia in this as well. Like, at high level, we can play Runic again. But until we get there, I just want to get through this. Because Despia is just fast.
I don't think branded is is brain dead at all. I think branded is quite uh, interesting if it gets a worthy opponent. Numeron is faster, yeah, but Numeron is completely not fun. Like, goddamn, I don't want to play Numeron. Ever. Spring Gans kit. Okay, not the best opener for them. You'd rather have Alubur, of course. Yeah, Numeron just sucks. I mean, in the low ranks, it's probably not even that bad, but... All right, let's see this. Let's see this maxi resolving, please. One time. Easy, Pog. Okay. Now let's see what happens here. You have a Mirror Jade in two summons, which puts me to six cards and then seven. So, and we definitely break that unless you... You could go Expulsion Lock, but we have called by. Did they go Expulsion? They did not. Okay. There's the fusion. Oh man, this hand is so good. <laughs> Their hand is also not bad, but the maxi kind of just bops them. How many subs to climb with Numeron? I don't really let my the subs decide stuff like that. I don't... It doesn't work that way around. Uh, I don't let the subs decide the content. It's more that the content decides the subs, you know? If the content is good, I get subs. It's not if I get subs, that's the content. Unless there's like a very specific sub goal or whatever. I mean, you could you decide the content by watching or not watching, anyways, right? But I can't be bought like that. I'm also just never gonna play a deck that I don't enjoy, just because like someone throws money at me. That's not how that works. I do want to, at the end of the day, enjoy uh, my streams as well. Can you show your list? Uh, I can. Remind me towards the end of this game again, because I will forget otherwise. I do enjoy playing Branded, yeah. I do like Branded a lot. Oh, the crossout is nutty. Oh my god, we're going to take him apart so hard. He doesn't have opening. Oh no. Oh god, no. This hand is completely unethical. We have cross out, we have called by and cross out. So we negate the hand trap. Oh god, no. I could have gotten, I could have actually, I had a cute play available. To, to pop the Mirror Jade with Chimera, but... Like, it was activate poly chain opening, but... I didn't have the poly yet, so... Poly, edge imp... And now we just allure casual. We have eight cards now. After allure, we're gonna have nine. As one does sometimes with Despia. You know, casually nine cards in hand. Easy clap, nothing wrong with that. Before before we start playing, essentially. Beep beep.
No, we still have... We, we get nine because of the tragedy triggers. Do you allure us a plus one in this case? Unless you wanted to keep the... Unless it, unless you wanted to banish an edgem chain, which we could have done that. Banishing edgem chain also wasn't bad. And then fusing the tragedy later and get its effect. Maybe. And then we will grab Branded Lost. God So I could just poly here and see if they let me make Chimera, but if I poly and they chain Mirror Jade, it's annoying. So I'm gonna start Branded Fusion. What did you play during the Branded and Soul Soul days? Uh, I only entered a few tournaments that era. I played Branded, I got second at a regional with. Uh, and then I got I played Liberal Mancer at German Nationals, which we will absolutely not talk about. Uh, I'm gonna send Adlib here because we have Brandon in red. I still love Libromancer. I stay. I stand by that. Uh, no, I didn't win a regional. I think with Despia. I don't remember. No. I got second in Karlsruhe. I don't remember winning one with Despia. Don't think so. Now we grab Merc, and we make Mirror Jade, and let's see how this toggling works. Let's see if this toggling works. It should, right? If I toggle on here, on the summon of Mirror, on the summon of Mirror Jade, if I use it immediately, they should not be able to respond, right? Are you succeeded in special summoning? They should not be able to respond here. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to banish your mirror jade. Bop. Bye bye. Mm, I'm annoyed by that. I'm annoyed by that. A little bit. I, I still think it's fine. Because, I mean... No, it's fine still. I'm not sure if we still kill, though. Uh, Brandon in red, Adlib... Um, uh, there's no point in activating this. I will, I will do that for follow-up. Get rid of their follow-up. Mm, 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 mm. Why did Modcheck get removed? Is Modcheck not there anymore? I don't. I I don't know why my Modcheck would be gone. We've already used Edgem Chain, so. Uh, 
Uh, we don't win this turn. Right? Hold on. Fuse... Adlib... No, it's not quite game. Is it? Oh, no, wait, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Hold on. Uh, activate Adlib. Target Jade. Merc. Uh, this. We are going to poly... Yes. Uh, hold up. Activate poly. Make Chimera. Fuse the Masquerade. Fuse Edgem. Fuse this. Activate Chimera. Pop this. Bring back Masquerade. And then banish their Masquerade with Mirror Jade. It was important that we pop the kit with the Chimera so that our Masquerade can come back. Uh, and it's also important that we banish the Masquerade with the Mirror Jade. Well, in this case, it doesn't matter because we have called by for it, but like normally it doesn't. Oh yeah, see, I would have forgotten the list completely. Uh, this is currently it. The the, the thing is, I do really want to make this 40 cards, but I haven't decided what I want to take out yet. Like, you can maybe go lower on Patchwork. Maybe go lower on Patchwork. Maybe cut Droplet. But Droplet seems very strong. I like everything else. I like everything else. We could go lower on Ash, but that seems wrong if, if, if Despia is one of the most played decks. You could play 2-2-2 two, two, two on the patchwork. You could play 2-2-2 two, two, two on the patchwork. My question is how badly do you need outs for the branded expulsion mark? Because honestly, if it's not for... Uh, if it's not for... The expulsion lock, I wouldn't play Droplet. Why didn't Crossout C play in the TCG? It did. I think it did see play. It was a little bit of a mess for Crossout though, because we had so many different decks at the time. We had so many different decks at the time that like Crossout wasn't good in every matchup. And the only card you could basically hit in every deck was... Um, Ash. But in Despia, it saw play. for Just for Ash, because that was good enough reason. And now, we watch.
All right. I mean, I get it. <laughs> Fine. We take those. <laughs> My body is ready. Thank you for the five months. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> God damn, dude. Average at emancipator combo. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get your giant card framed? I framed it myself. I bought a frame with the right size and then I framed it myself. Oh god. Royal Citadel is never a good sign. Oh, that's a good sign, though. Alright, Maxi always late to the party. As it should be. Bro, do I have to look at this thing now every single activation? Please don't. Please don't let me watch the counters tick up every time I activate a spell card. Oh, no. How does Maxi work in the deck? Uh, you discard it and then you draw cards. It's very good against almost any deck in the game. That's all there is to it. Nothing else. Card is just very good. Or you fuse it away for Guardian Camera, as we are about to do right now. No, we don't. I lied to you. I lied. We have to get out of this swamp. We have to get out of this swamp. Branded will get hit so hard after this cup. I do. I am. Yeah. Branded will hit. Will be hit. I, I do think. Yeah. And Master Duel, honestly, is quite fast usually with their adjustments. So I don't actually think it's going to take a long time for them to, like, limit Branded Fusion. Good hand. We haven't even... We haven't used Snow a single time. Maybe it's time to take out Snow. Oh god, Freda plants. Uh, add a Freda monster. Okay. I decided not to maxi because they can just choose to add or they can also gamma me. Snow is the only light monster. Yeah, but honestly, most of the time just making Lubelion is just as good. So I'm not sure if you need... No. Oh, they add a Brandishment. Okay, that means they have Fusion already. Ah! Oh, they drew the Cobra. Oh god, what is happening? 
Wait, isn't this the bad one? Oh, yep. Okay. Why is it this one? Stay Sailor Romarin. Then the level 5 or lower plant monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. Uh, So far, so good. I think we can still beat this. I don't know what the purpose of this thing is. They might have been thrown off by the fact that they drew the one Cobra. I'm pretty sure that's very bad if you draw this. And they only play one, I think. In, like... Uh, 60 cards, by the way. Casually drew the Cobra. They are absolutely molding right now. They are furious. I think they've never been this mad in their life. They drew the, the Cobra in 60 cards. On the other hand, I am also super molding because I... Um, I got ashed on my max C in 60 cards. Okay, Branded Banishment and Mirror Jade is what we have to beat. Well, that's not that bad, actually. That's not bad. We can draw with that. That's okay. That though, you guys are... Oh wait, no, this is busted. Okay, the call to buy is broken. Uh, I think we win these. They have no target for banishment? They... Isn't banishment... Can can banishment not target Alubur? It can. Okay, so they do have a target. So I cannot call by now. So I have to maxi. I was so close to just slamming down the called by the grave. I was this close. I was this close to another clip situation. I was this close to another clip highlight, but I I avoided it. Ooh, the poly is a nice draw. Uh, they fuse. Okay. Ray goes to Pelia. Another Max C number three. Oh, God. May I introduce you to Max C number three? Uh, okay. So the, the most obvious answer here would be to search Branded Fusion. The problem with searching Branded Fusion is it doesn't actually do that much for us. Um, I think we go for opening. Do they have opening? They have opening. That's annoying. So if I go, if I go branded fusion here, I'm going to activate branded fusion, make Albion or whatever. No, make uh, Lubelion. I have to discard for it. Then they... Ooh. Nah, I, I could discard Snow. And then dodge the Drago Stapelia with it. That's nice. Yeah, okay. It's Branded Fusion. It's Branded Fusion. Only because we have Snow. They are using Aluber here. I think we Ash that. Because we want cards in the grave for the snow anyways.
So we're going to Branded Fuse into Lubelion. Branded Fuse into Lubelion, send Albaz, and Merc triggers. Yeah, Merc. This is, this is Pog gameplay. This is peak Despia gameplay. Then we go Lubelion, Pitch, Snow. And now if they Drago Stapelia, which they will because they are Master Duel and the Easy Clap. We go Chain, Snow. This. Merc. Albaz. This, 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 this. Bop, 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 bop. Bop. This dodges Drago Stapelia. Snow. Lubelion will now summon Jade. Merc will now trigger because we banished it. Uh, and I guess we triggered that to bait the Mirror Jade, right? And we chain Mirror Jade. They sent Alba Lunatus, so I will send Elbion because I'm planning to call by that. Uh, I will just banish the Mirror Jade, I think. Oh. And then Merc adds... Albaz. Oh. Merc adds Albaz. Uh, I guess we trigger this. Doesn't really matter. And then we can make we can make Chimera or Albion here. And I think I th like Albion is nice, but because they have the banished Mirror Jade, the Albion doesn't do much for us. Like I think it's Chimera with this, that, and Alba. I guess in that case, oh, we should have gotten, uh, we should have taken Fall, uh, the thingy, um, Albion. But it's fine. Uh, let's pop the scale. Uh, what do we have? Snow again? Uh, we don't need that. So we just go battle phase. We get rid of Drago Stapelia. When we, yeah, we need to get rid of Drago Stapelia because that can be protected in the end phase. Main phase two, we go, we just go this. I get that. Peak gameplay. End phase. Let's resolve this. That. We have demolished them. Nice. Okay. Timer is a little low. Timer is a little low, but okay, easy. Nice. Bug. That was fun. That was an actual fun game. It was a nice last game. Yes, it's crazy has spotted it. We have reached the end of the stream, unfortunately. Um...
here's the deck list one last time. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I will send you guys over to Nadir, whose internet is working again. His internet is working again, so he can stream again, finally. All right, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you guys for all the follows, all the subs, all the good stuff. Um, also, remember, now that you're here, I forgot. I keep saying this. I keep not saying this enough. Uh, exclamation mark Discord to join the Discord community. Um, it is thriving. It is nice. It's a nice place. Um, if you haven't joined yet, consider joining. Um, the deck is 44 cards. We're going to work on it more. It's not perfect yet. Uh, it's not perfect yet. Anyways. I'll send you guys over to Nadir. I want to see a lot of Josh YGO hearts in Nadir's chat, please, for his new working internet. And um, yeah, if you want to have some more Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm sure Nadir is, uh, is going to play some Master Duel today as well. So thank you guys all for watching. And you guys have a great rest of your day.